Good morning and welcome to the ABC's coverage of the 2023 Anzac Day March along Elizabeth Street in Sydney. We look forward to bringing you all the colour, feeling and emotion of this special day. A day when we reflect on those first Anzacs who went ashore at Gallipoli in 1915. We also pay tribute to the sacrifices made by those who followed in serving their country and those currently serving today. 110 years ago, just two years before that landing at Gallipoli, the first Royal Australian Naval Fleet sailed into Sydney Harbour. Here at the Anzac Memorial in Sydney, they put together a special exhibition to mark this occasion. I would love to have been part of the audience in October of 1913 when the Royal Australian Navy arrived in Sydney Harbour. Thousands of people lined the harbour to see these ships that had come all the way from Britain and it was our first fleet. And here was their protector, their naval shield, arriving here in Australian waters. There were cruisers like Sydney and Melbourne. HMAS Australia was a heavy cruiser. People were fascinated. Here was this technology in our waters flying our flag. Brad, why was this such a significant moment for Australia? I think it was a huge demonstration that we were an emerging nation. Federation was only a dozen years old um, and we really wanted to demonstrate that we were part of the British Empire but could also stand on our own feet. And so the fleet was enormously significant. And just in time before that critical First World War. Were they aware? I mean, they must have been aware that war clouds were looming, were just gathering over Europe. And of course, we're so far away, but our economy relies on European trade. We need our maritime commerce protected and the fleet's the way to do it. There are so many campaigns, operations that uh, those servicemen and women have been involved in. Just take us through some of those significant moments. You know, the first great Australian loss of life was when our submarine, AE-1, was lost off German New Guinea in 1914, in September. In November that year, HMAS Sydney, our, uh, our cruiser, drove the Emden onto a reef after absolutely smashing it in a naval battle in the Cocos Islands. So the Royal Australian Navy has really played a major part of our military past. Brad, you've done so much work to put together this exhibition, but is there a piece that has a special place for you? Hard call, uh, but from the Royal United Services Institute, they've loaned us a remarkable painting. British maritime artist named John Alcott happened to be in Sydney in 1913 when the fleet came through the heads and he's made this really powerful depiction of those huge grey vessels coming into the harbour. Among the largest movable man-made objects on earth at that time. The Navy always leads the march on Anzac Day because it's the senior service. So we'll see groups of sailors marching in uniform in their ship contingents. But we'll also see proud old sailors marching with their shipmates behind banners that show their service through wars dating back 110 years. Thank you, Brad, for that wonderful insight. As we can see, it is a glorious day here along Elizabeth Street in Sydney as we go live to our broadcast of the Anzac March here in Sydney, paying respects also to the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation on which uh, today's broadcast is coming to you. And uh, we can see here we have the Vanguard um, making its way already along Elizabeth Street in Sydney. We have here the Royal Australian Navy Band and uh, it is administered by the HMAS Cuttable consisting of approximately 50 full-time members under the musical instruction of Lieutenant Commander Brian O'Kane. Complemented as well by a number of Naval Reserve musicians. Today the band has been 
led by Drum Major Chief Petty Officer Lucas Kennedy. Georgina Whelan, the ACT Emergency Services Agency Commissioner. Georgina has spent more than 30 years in the Army transitioning to the Australian Defence Force as a brigadier. Good morning, Miriam. It is great to be here with you again today. And as we can see, the weather has cleared and we are seeing an absolutely fantastic turnout. What we can see on the screen is the first to march or ride, should we say, is the New South Wales Police on both motorcycles, as we saw earlier, in a V formation. And they were followed by the police on our more traditional mode of transport, horseback. Today we have 15 mounted police officers and the troop leader is Inspector Sally Rogers, riding troop horse Navajo. Inspector Rogers has held that position of officer in charge since November 2021. And riding with Inspector Rogers is Sergeant Melinda Duncan, riding Troop Horse Prince. Sure, um, we just saw... Um so, uh, as we see, we can see there are uh, the Return Services League of Australia, New South Wales branch, making its way down Elizabeth Street. And I'd also like to take the opportunity to welcome Squadron Leader Eamon Hamilton as well, who's joining us in the commentary team here today with the Royal Australian Air Force um, and is a public affairs officer with the Air Mobility Group. We Thanks very much, Miriam. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah. Eamon, you better ma mention uh, Ray James while he's in uh, in shot. Otherwise, uh, the head of the RSL, uh, a Navy man. I know uh, uh, as an Air Force bloke, you'd, you'd probably give him second priority, but uh, uh, Ray's doing a wonderful job. And uh, this is his final year as head of RSL New South Wales. Behind them, we can see the uh, New Zealand Return Services contingent. Uh, at the front of their uh, contingent is Air Commodore Nick Osborne, uh, just behind the Land Rover there. Brad, it is wonderful to have you with us in the commentary team here as well today. Um, and, uh, you know, we spoke to you a little earlier about that Anzac Memorial, 110 years of the Royal Australian Navy. Very significant for them here today. Indeed. Thanks, Miriam. Yes, it's... Um, and the crowds, are, and, and, and it's not raining. I think this is a... Uh, it's, it's wonderful to be emerging from COVID at last and, uh, and uh, watching the, the Kiwis... It, uh, escort the march. The uh, New Zealand contingent have been marching since the first Anzac Day march in Sydney after World War II and have used the same band, banner template ever since as well as the New Zealand flag. Uh, my understanding is this is the first year with no World War II veterans marching with the New Zealand contingent. Here we can see our second band for the march this morning, the Scots College Pipes and Drums. And they have proudly worn the tartan of the Black Watch, the Royal Highland Regiment, since they were given permission to do so back in 1931. The band started in 1900 when five boys joined the cadets as pipers. At the present, there are over 500 boys learning to play or are playing bagpipes or drums. Behind the band are the, the national flag contingent. There's 200 flags there today being carried by Australian Air Force cadets in full uniform. The decision was made some years ago that massed flag contingent should lead off the march every year. The flags have been displayed wherever Australian troops have been deployed and today it takes on a special significance as these flags were used in the Vietnam Veterans Welcome Home Parade in 1987. 
to mark 50 years since Australia's withdrawal from the Vietnam War. Yeah, it's been our instant since 1901, but uh, the, the Flag Act wasn't passed till 53, so I guess the Australian flag turns 70 this year. And talking of flags, a shout out to the posties who have been busy handing out flags to all of those people we can see on the screen lining the streets here at the march today. It's great to see such a celebration and a respectful conduct of Anzac Day. And here we have band number six, which I believe is the New South Wales Police Pipe Band, which was formed in 1946 by Commissioner William John Kay. We can see on our screen the World War I unit flags. Behind them, the flags of the Great War. The flags are carried by Australian Army cadets. The cadets have all volunteered their time to honour the, the memory of all Australians who have served overseas during the First World War and the 60,000 that never returned home. Yeah, the... Um Actually, we're, we're, the Australia sent five infantry divisions to the to the Great War, numbered one to five, uh, and a light horse division. Um, eventually, in the in the Middle East, actually, what's on the screen at the moment is the as a riderless horse, uh, I, in in memory of those who who didn't return, both riders and horses. We didn't return any of the animals that we sent to South Africa from 1899 to 1902, or to the Great War from 1914 to. To 1918, uh, well over 130,000 Australian horses were sent uh, to our own light horse regiments, as well as to, uh, to to British and Indian units serving in the in the Middle East and on the Western Front. Here we do, in fact, have the New South Wales Police Pipe Band. The band was formed in 1946 by Commissioner William John McKay as a group of experienced pipers and drummers serving members of the New South Wales Police. To honour their founder and patron, the band adopted the ancient tartan of the crest of Clan McKay. And their motto, 1940, translates to with a strong hand. Colours of the 7th Australian Division uh, marched through earlier. The 7th Division was formed in 1940 and served initially in Syria and then later in the South Pacific. Taxis. Um, from 1945, the New South Wales Government reserved a portion of new taxi licences for returned servicemen for the purposes of resettling Second World War veterans into work. New licences were allocated by ballot. Um, Earlier we saw a few of our Second World War veterans arriving in these taxis. When the government announced in 1947 that it would make available licences to operate 200 taxis in, in Sydney, metropolitan area, an active member of the Legion, Mr Raymond Stanley, sought to secure a taxi licence for Legion members. Submission was put to the then Minister for Transport, Morris O'Sullivan, who agreed to allocate 50 taxi licences to Legion members. Thus, Legion Cabs was born. The Minister later allocated quotas of taxi licences to other ex-service organisations. Brad, I understand the motorcade of the many dozen cabs we can see in front of us are marshalled into order, careful to maintain the order of the cabs and the seniority by conflict and year of the occupants in each cab. Yes, I think we've got what about a dozen or so Second World War veterans uh, in those in those cabs, um, including 
Navy, Army, Air Force and, and Merchant uh, Navy personnel getting to participate in the march despite being passengers in cabs. Actually, the cabs were um, uh, led off by the uh, New South Wales Police Force veterans. Uh, New South Wales Police has a long history of military service, uh, serving members of fought in conflicts, including Sudan in 1885, uh, the Boer War from 1899 to 1902, the Great War, uh, the Second World War, Malayan conflict, Korean War, Vietnam, the Gulf, and the war in Afghanistan. 63 members of the New South Wales Police Force were killed in action or died of wounds during many of the wars, including South Africa, the landing at Gallipoli, and uh, the Great War, the Second World War, and the sinking of HMAS Sydney. And we can certainly see and hear on our screens the very warm reception those veterans are receiving as they are driving down the march this morning. Couldn't have asked for a uh, better day, I think, for um, today's march. And to see such a wonderful turnout, so many young faces as well there getting amongst the crowd. And we do note that there are also a number of anniversaries being marked with this year's Anzac Day as well. This year marks 50 years since Australia's withdrawal from Vietnam. 80 years since the end of the Korean War. the Corrective Services New South Wales Band. It was originally formed in 1981 to provide essential ceremonial support to Corrective Services New South Wales and the New South Wales Government. The band is now comprised of 45 professional casual musicians. I know it's out of order, but we should really mention uh, a couple of the, the people we saw come past in, in wheelchairs earlier on, Second World War veterans like uh, Val Ireland, who uh, served in the Australian Women's Army Service during the Second World War and uh, spent her war staffing searchlights uh, in support of anti-aircraft batteries in Newcastle and Stockton. Among the list of Second World War veterans we also got today was um, Bruce Townsend, who was uh, served in a support platoon in New Guinea, and um, Ron Leckie, whose 101st birthday it is today on Anzac Day, who served with the RAAF. The naval contingents are coming through now, and um, following the uh, Here we can see, in fact, the Corrective Services New South Wales Band making their way down Elizabeth Street. The uh, band is led by full-time music director, Deputy Superintendent John Buckley. He's been in this role for more than 10 years. Immediately behind the band was uh, HMAS Australia, and uh, we could see the, the banner there, although here we're focusing on the uh, commander of the Australian fleet, uh, Rear Admiral Chris... Christopher Smith, accompanied by Lieutenant Katrina Horn uh, and Flag Lieutenant Warren Officer 
Bradley Lay, commanding, uh, sorry, a commanding warrant officer. HMAS Australia was uh, is led by their president, Christine Roberts, whose father, Keith Roberts, was their president for some 30 years. HMAS Australia was a heavy cruiser and the pride of the Australian fleet. Of course, she uh, led the ships in back in 1913, was HMAS Australia number one, um, and uh, HMAS Australia number two was a heavy cruiser uh, who received eight battle honours for her service in the Second World War from Savo Island uh, to the fighting around the Philippines. The Women's Royal Australian Naval Service, and, uh, and I hope Jean Nyson, who's uh, 100 years old, is watching today because she served as a signaller at HMAS Harmon during the, uh, the Second World War. The, uh, the women were initially rejected but later formed a, a vital role uh, as communicators with the Royal Australian Navy. continue to, to uh, perform a role within the Royal Australian Navy. Some 22% of the RAN is, uh, is now female. Royal Australian Naval Corvettes, most of them built at Cockatoo Island in Sydney. Uh, almost 60 of them, uh, Australia's small ships providing rather vital escort and mine sweeping duties around the Australian coast. Ian Crawford, a, uh, went, a rear admiral, but uh, first went to sea as a midshipman on HMS Ceylon uh, in Korea in 1950. So uh, uh, he'll be certainly remembering the uh, the Korean War this year with the uh, with the anniversary, 70 years since uh, July 1953 when the war ended. HMAS Shropshire and uh, Guy Griffith is uh, is still with us. I can't see him marching today, but I'm sure he'll be watching. His uh, uh, Guy as a midshipman was on HMAS Repulse when she was sunk in December 1941 um, and then ended up uh, a senior officer on HMAS Shropshire that replaced Canberra that was sunk off Savo Island in 1942. And Shropshire served alongside HMAS Australia uh, during the, the battles in the Philippines in 1945. Australian submarines. The, uh, Part of our fleet were the first two submarines, AE-1 and AE-2, and uh, AE-1 the, was lost with all hands in the floor of Blanche Bay in September of 1914, and uh, the wreck has, has only very recently been been found. AE-2 was lost, uh, the first vessel to uh, to uh, breach the, the Dardanelles, and she lies on the floor of the Sea of Marmara. HMAS Melbourne Association, Melbourne uh, escorted the first AIF in uh, 1914 and uh, through multiple iterations ended up an aircraft carrier in, in, the, uh, in the 1960s. But, uh, and we can see HMAS Arunta um, on the screen. The original Arunta was a tribal class destroyer. She was launched in 1942 and named for the Arendt Aranda, Aboriginal people of Central Australia. During World War II, the Arunta sunk a Japanese submarine off Port Moresby. She then served with the occupation for CES and was part of the United Nations fleet enforcing the Korean armistice. In fact, we just picked up some uh, a great collection from Arunta, um, from uh, uh, Tony Morgan up uh, up near at Salamander Bay. Which 
actually that was the HMAS Tobruk Association, the first Tobruk saw service during the Korean War and the Far East Strategic Reserve. She was accidentally hit by a shell from her sister ship Anzac in 1960 and decommissioned. Second Tobruk was commissioned in 1981 and has since deployed to Fiji, Somalia, Bougainville, East Timor and the Solomon Islands. She's now a popular dive wreck between Bundaberg and Harvey Bay. And I think that was the HMAS Yarra Association that we briefly saw on our screen. Marching today are members from the Yarra 3 and X Yarra 4 crews, and they're led by its president, Ray Vidler. Chief Petty Officer serving on Yarra from 1979 to 1986. The Naval Warfare Officers Association, leading the Naval Warfare Officers Association, is the National President, Commodore Anthony Flint, CSC. Former commander of the Australian Fleet and Deputy Chief of the Navy, his sea commands included HMAS Darwin and HMAS Newcastle, coincidentally uh, his hometown. the Sydney Boys High School marching band there. Yeah, we uh, I meant to mention with Melbourne, um, Fred Lane, uh, who uh, flew 71 sorties off HMAS Sydney, the aircraft carrier in uh, Korea, uh, also flew A4s off, uh, off Melbourne in the 1960s. And uh, hopefully Fred's watching from home today. At, uh, thank you for your interview. Uh, at the Anzac Memorial. Fred, if you're watching. There's HMAS Yarras colours the uh, extraordinary job that uh, we remember Yarra for as uh, sacrificing their lives to try and save the convoy that they were escorting uh, from Java in 1942. There's the Communications Branch Association. Communications of Marshes is a separate contingent since 1947 and are known as the eyes and ears of the Navy. The banner depicts the old rates or wireless telegraphy, the wings of Mercury and the crossed flags of the visual signals. And behind those is the Merchant Navy Land Rover. Um, the con this contingent marches with several national flags that the Australian merchant seamen have sailed under. The Australian Red Ensign, the British Red Ensign, known as the Red Duster, Norwegian, Dutch, Panamanian, United States, Canadian, Greek and French flags. The Merchant Navy has been crucial to Australia's prosperity in the post-war, carrying goods and raw materials all over the world. I'm hoping Donald Kennedy uh, is marching. He uh, braved Japanese submarines off the uh, in the Pacific coast of Australia. And there we can see the Royal Australian Navy Health Services. The Royal Australian Navy Health Services is led by Captain Ian Young, RAN. I've had the privilege of working with and deploying with um, Captain Young on a couple of occasions. He is an outstanding medical officer and an asset to the Royal Australian Navy Health System. Since 1912, the Navy Health Services have provided support in all theatres of war, both at sea and ashore. The association was formed over 40 years ago for the purpose of allowing medical people, whether they be doctors, dentists, nurses and admin staff or assistants, to meet and socialise, sharing experiences and stories. One of the supporters of the banner was, was Jen Evans, and uh, who got her humanitarian service medal for uh, work in Arche uh, during the, the disastrous tsunami there. And you can see everyone 
looking skyward at the moment as uh, Air Force comes in for a fly past of the city with an F-35 Lightning. The F-35s are based up at Rath Base Williamtown and Tyndall in the Northern Territory. And we can see the HMAS Sydney Association and escorts led by the association patron Commodore Paul Cable AM retired. He was the commissioning commanding officer of HMAS Sydney 4 in 1983. The Royal Australian Navy's had five Sydneys. The, uh, the first was among those ships that came through the heads in October 1913. Uh, and the last one is, uh, has just got a, uh, a new skipper and I think uh, its contingent is, is, uh, is marching in Melbourne today. Here we have the Castle Hill RSL Youth Band. They were formerly the City of Sydney Youth Band. Regarded as one of Australia's finest symphonic wind orchestras, participating regularly in state and national band championships. And it is dedicated to providing outstanding grounding in wind orchestra repertoire. Just beyond them, we can see the, the first of the VWs, the Scrap Iron Flotilla, HMAS Vendetta Vend uh, Veterans Association, the first Vendetta. Um, was part of the, the Scrap Iron flotilla, flotilla during the Second World War. The second vendetta was an Australian-built daring-class destroyer that served as part of the Far East Strategic Reserve and with the United States Navy's 7th Fleet during the Vietnam War, the only daring-class destroyer to fire her guns against an enemy during the Vietnam conflict. In 1974, she was one of 13 RAN ships sent to Darwin to help after Cyclone Tracy. Her pennant number was 08 and her unofficial motto was, life's great on 08. HMAS Hobart was, is being led by Captain David Blazy. Um, who served on HMAS Hobart as the Deputy Marine Engineer Officer spanning two Vietnam deployments. Hobart 1 was a light cruiser that was torpedoed and severely damaged in July 1943. HMAS Perth, I hope Frank Gov McGovern is, is watching. Um, Frank's 103 and he served on HMAS Perth in the Mediterranean and uh, was on board when she was torpedoed in Bantam Bay in 1942 and like half his crewmates became prisoners of the Japanese. And behind them is the HMAS Brisbane. There have previously been two HMAS ships named Brisbane and there is currently a third, an air warfare destroyer which was commissioned on the 27th of October 2018. The first Brisbane operated during the World War in the Indian and Pacific Ocean. The first Brisbane was built in Sydney and Cockatoo Island. And there we have HMAS Darwin. The Sydney division of the association is led by the association's president, Captain Rick Bailey, RAN, retired. He was the commanding officer of the ship when it was commissioned in Seattle, USA. HMAS Darwin was the last of four Oliver class, uh, Oliver Hazard class of guided missile frigates built for the RAN in Seattle and was the first to be named after the city of Darwin. Darwin was decommissioned in December 2017 after more than 32 years in commission, which included operational service in East Timor and the Middle East. The association was established in 2020. We just saw passing through there the Hills District Pipe Band as well, which was formed in 1970. And there we can see the Tingira Australia Association. HMAS Tingira commenced service in April 25, 1912 and operated until 1927, training many of the sailors who took part in both world wars. The junior recruits wore a Tingira patch on their shoulder to remind them of their part as boy sailors. 
Tingara is long, long tradition uh, dating to training wayward boys on Cockatoo Island. The first naval Victoria Cross in Australia uh, was a uh, uh, was one of their instructors. He earned his Victoria Cross in the Crimean War in 1854 at the Battle of Inkerman, and he trained boys on Cockatoo Island on Sir Brian. And there we can see the Royal Australian Navy Clearance Divers Association. These are the Navy's specialist divers who carry out mine clearance operations and the disposal of explosive ordnance. They work on mine hunting ships or as part of a team on special operations. Just ahead of the Clearance Divers Association, I think we had the uh, Mine Warfare Association. This year, the Australian Mine Warfare Association are marching in memory of leading, air, leading seaman combat systems operator Jake Biddick, who passed away in late March 2023. Clearance Diving Team 3 discovered the uh, Iraqi sea mines in 2003 that were going to uh, uh, prevent the British landings in southern Iraq during the, uh, during the Gulf War. And uh, they've just loaned us one of their uh, one of their mines on display. And on our screens, we can see the Royal Australian Navy personnel current serving marching today. Almost three thousand of them. The Royal Australian Navy is led by the commander of the Australian Fleet, Rear Admiral Christopher Smith, AMCSC. Rear Admiral Christopher Smith assumed command at the end of last year and his seagoing appointments have included HMAS Stalwart, Parramatta, Perth 2, Canberra 2, Anzac and commander of HMAS Gladstone, Darwin and Canberra 3. He has a long and distinguished naval career and has included Australian liaison officers to the UN Central Command Forward Headquarters as well as numerous operational deployments. Yeah, it was Canberra marching past the uh, our the brand new uh, um, landing helicopter dock, and uh, one of the two largest ships ever constructed for the Royal Australian Navy, uh, both amphibious assault vessels. Recently returned from Vanuatu following uh, cyclone and storm that damage over there, they uh, deployed across with Army Aviation to conduct uh, recovery efforts uh, with the community there. And we can see HMAS Cutterball led by Commander Simone Franklin, representing the CO of Cutterball. And it's a huge turnout from Cutterball today, 700 personnel. HMAS Cutterball was commissioned on the 1st of January 1943 and was named after the Sydney Ferry Cutterball. Yeah, Cutterball was, was uh, sunk on the morning of the 1st of uh, uh, June 1942 uh, when a Japanese uh, torpedo fired by a Japanese midget submarine in Sydney Harbour, detonated against the sea wall and uh, 19 Australian sailors and two British sailors uh, were, uh, were drowned on board the vessel when she uh, we sunk. So uh, wonderful to see the name of Cutterball preserved by uh, these sailors as they march past because of the, the vital connection with Sydney. Cutterball is the Aboriginal name for wonderful. And we can see an absolutely wonderful display of professionalism and pride marching down uh, George Street today. If you go to um, go to Rookwood, there's a, a Navy section there. The, the, those who died on Cutterball in 1942 are, uh, are buried separate to the Commonwealth War Cemetery at uh, at Rookwood. It's certainly an extraordinary, worth a worth a uh, a visit to uh, remember those who died in Sydney Harbour in uh, June 1942. Here we have the Air League and of Moorbank and it was formed by the members from the Moorbank Squadron. The band considers it a great privilege and honour to participate in the Sydney Anzac Day March. 
support the veterans and the serving men and women of the Australian Defence Forces and has also performed or at least to show entertaining the crowds much to the delight of the police. Speaking of the cuttable before, I'm hoping we'll see a uh, veteran, Bruce Robertson, with the RAF contingent later, who uh, was a wireless operator who intercepted some of the Japanese Morse code signals during that attack at uh, RAF Richmond. This is the HMAS Brisbane contingent. Their march leader is Commander Kingsley Scarce. Uh, approximately 180 marching today from HMAS Brisbane, which is the second of the three Hobart class guided missile destroyers. You may remember July last year, the crew of HMAS Brisbane rescued two sailors from a capsized yacht in extreme sea conditions after, after the Mariner's yacht rolled about 15 nautical miles off Wollongong on the New South Wales south coast. Brisbane has a state-of-the-art phased array radar in combination with the SM2 missile and can provide an advanced air warning uh, defence system capable of engaging enemy aircraft and missiles at ranges in excess of 150 kilometres. Bris Brisbane also carries a helicopter for surveillance and response to support key warfare areas. And we can see HMAS Supply just behind Brisbane. 130 personnel marching today, led by Commanding Officer Cindy Jenkins, CSC. The second ship to carry the name in the history of the Royal Australian Navy, HMS Supply 2 is the first of two supply class auxiliary oiler replenishment ships. And there we have HMAS Hobart, our second Hobart class guided missile destroyers to march today under the leadership of Commander Tina Brown, CSM. She is the first woman to take command of an RAN destroyer. And the commander and her crew have been very busy this year already. Just last month, her crew rescued six mariners from a 30 metre motor yacht north of Australia. That was on March the 6th. The crew deployed a rigid-hulled inflatable boat in very unfavourable conditions to rescue them. And here we have the New South Wales Police Pipe Band. And the band formed in 1946 by Commissioner William John McKay. The band now exists as a civilian band and has taken part in 2017 Edinburgh Military Tattoos held in Sydney, also the Royal Edinburgh Military Tattoo in Scotland. This is the new HMAS Arunta, the march leader, Commander Jason McBain. <coughs> HMAS Arunta 2 is one of eight Anzac class frigates. HMAS Arunta 2 also received an unusual gift a month or so ago when uh, the HMAS Arunta 1 White Ensign was presented to the ship while in Tasmania for the Royal Hobart Regatta. The flat. And Commander Ross Upton leads 120 personnel marching today for HMAS Chules. Chules is a 16,000 ton ship. It's 176 metres long and capable of carrying over 300 troops, 23 Abrams tanks, 150 light trucks, and is also capable of operating Navy and Army helicopters. HMAS Warramunga, led by Commander Jennifer Graham. HMAS Warramunga is the third of eight Anzac-class frigates built at Williamtown in Victoria, designed based on the German Miko 200 frigate. HMAS Penguin, the march leader is Commander Michael Nippris, with over 200 marching from Penguin today. And Penguin is the Navy's oldest commission shore establishment in New South Wales, and this year marks the 81st anniversary of her commissioning in 1942. 
Uh, she's located at Middlehead in the Sydney suburb of Balmoral. It's the last remaining military presence on Middlehead and today is the home of the ADF Diving School, the Hydrographic School and other specialist units and medical facilities. HMAS Waterhen is led by Commander Fiona Eggins with 270 personnel marching today. HMAS Waterhen was commissioned in 1962 and is the home of Australia's Mine Warfare Fleet Clearance Diving Team 1 as well as the Mine Warfare and Clearance Diving Group diving group and capability support groups. Captain Aaron Scott leads HMAS Watson. Watson's the Royal Australian Navy's premier maritime warfare training establishment. It's located in, this, in Sydney Harbour in Watson's Bay, named after Robert Watson, a quartermaster of HMS Sirius, ship of the First Fleet. Watson commissioned the land-based ship as the Navy's radar training school in 1945. In 1956, the torpedo and anti-submarine warfare schools were added. Today, it's the home of maritime warfare training in Australia, training up to 300 people at any one time. And here we have in their glorious green and gold, the Epping RSL Golden Kangaroos Marching Band. They're based in the Hornsby Shire and have been performing in the community for over 50 years, they actually consist of three concert bands, the stage band and our marching band. And just behind the band, we can see HMAS Gasgoyne. HMAS Gascoigne is the fourth of the six UN class mine hunters. She was launched on the 11th of March 2000 and is based in Sydney at HMAS Waterham. Gascoigne is the second RAN ship to carry the name. HMAS Gascoigne 1 was Australia's first river class anti submarine frigate that served with distinction during World War II. And just behind Gascoigne is the last of our current serving ships, and that's HMAS Diamantina, led by Lieutenant Commander Georgina Ray Martin. HMAS Diamantina 2 is the fifth of six Ewan class mine hunter coastal vessels delivered to the RAN. The mine hunters are all named after Australian rivers. Diamantina is the second RAN ship to carry that name. The first Diamantina was a river class frigate that was in service from 1945 until 1980 and she saw action during World War II and from 1959 to decommissioning was employed as an oceanography survey vessel. And here we have the Fire and Rescue New South Wales uh, band. And just behind the band, we can see the New South Wales Fire and Rescue Veterans. And uh, the New South Wales Fire and Rescue contingent, I believe, is led by the Acting Commissioner, Megan Stifler, one of the Deputy Commissioners for New South Wales Fire and Rescue. For more than 100 years since 1922, Fire and Rescue New South Wales has been marching as a unit in the Sydney Anzac Day March. The contingent is made up of serving and retired officers and firefighters, as well as administrative and trades personnel. And with the uh, New South Wales Fire and Rescue Band, we also make note that uh, the band, which is led by 
Mr Mark Ray OAM and has been the director of music since 1986, will be retiring today uh, at the City of Sydney Fire Station when the band and contingent return from the Sydney Anzac Day March. Mr Graham Press will take the pattern as the band's new director of music. the uh, New South Wales Fire and Rescue Band. It was formed back in 1894, and back then it was known as the Paddington Brewery Volunteer Fire Brigade Band. It was formed as the New South Wales Fire Brigade Band in 1900, but was disbanded briefly in the 1960s. And of course, we've seen fire and rescue personnel, not only from New South Wales, but all across the country, deployed uh, this year in support of many of the natural hazards um, our communities have been facing. And deploying into New Zealand more recently as a consequence of the earthquake. I believe the contingent from uh, Urban Search and Rescue were also deployed by Air Force to Turkey following their earthquake earlier this year. Yes, they were, and they were supported by uh, firefighters from the ACT Fire and Rescue, Urban Fire and Rescue. We have here the Australian Army Band, Sydney. The drum major today is Sergeant Andrew Cassidy. And it is one of the five full-time professional military bands within the Australian Army Band Corps. The band regularly provides musical support for ceremonial and training activities conducted by the Australian Defence Force. And of course, this band leads in the Australian Army Forces um, and this uh, contingent today and World War II veterans. This contingent today will be led by Major General Susan Coyle, AMCSC DSM. And Major General Coyle will be accompanied by Warren Officer Darren Murch, Command Sergeant Major, and Captain Simon Parker, the aide de camp. And there we can see a number of our World War II veterans, uh, both in the Land Rover, waving to the crowd on display, and also in the background, marching as part of the contingent. Ah, second, fourth armoured. Uh, yeah. The um, armour takes the place of, of cavalry. We had the... Uh, uh, Armoured Corps. Oops, sorry. Second, fourth uh, were formed near Weewar in New South Wales, and uh, they uh, they took their Matilda tanks uh, to war in New Guinea and Bougainville during the battle for Slater's Knoll on Bougainville in 1945. The arrival of these tanks saved the 25th Infantry Battalion from being overrun by the Japanese. The, uh, we, we raised three armoured divisions during the Second World War and um, very, but uh, and although some of them had very low service numbers, the, uh, um, very few tank units were deployed to a combat area. They uh, shuffled them around Australia waiting for an invasion that didn't, didn't come.
Is that the 67th anti-aircraft searchlight battery we can see on the screen in front of us, led by Sue Kelly? Uh, this unit had the job of illuminating enemy, enemy bombers at night for anti-aircraft guns. This, this unit served in Darwin and was, pa was part of New Guinea forces defending Port Mosby against numerous bombing raids. Again, I think it is so wonderful to see family members marching um, down the street today uh, with their mothers, fathers and grandparents. Papua New Guinea Infantry Battalions, I assume they're uh, the the uh, volunteers of the uh, New Guinea Volunteer Rifles uh, and the Papuan Infantry Battalions uh, that did s such an extraordinary job in supporting the AIF and the uh, Australian military forces when they arrived uh, in, uh, in New Guinea to take the fight against the Japanese who uh, began landing in uh, Papua in July 1942 and the campaign that dragged on right through to the Japanese surrender in, uh, uh, during the, at the end of the Ida B. Wewak campaign in 1945. Another artillery unit, 2nd uh, 2nd Field Regiment, and uh, as we can see, part of the 6th Australian Division, the 1st Division raised for the 2nd AIF. Uh, and they saw service from uh, Libya in January of 1941 through Greece and Crete in May and uh, April and May of 1941. And then back to, the, uh, back to Australia and for the campaign in Papua and then eventually New Guinea. 2nd 17th Light Anti-Aircraft Battery. They, uh, they were the part of the rats of Moresby, Moresby trying to keep the, uh, the dozens and dozens of Japanese air raids over Moresby, keeping them up high with their uh, 40 millimetre Bofors guns. They, uh, they later fought in the Battle of the Beachheads and eventually through the rest of the Pacific campaign. We can see the Second Army Transport Company um, on our screens just a moment ago, which was formed in 1942, and it drove and maintained heavy machinery. Men were recruited from the Water Board and the Department of Main Roads, and essentially anybody who could, can, who could handle large equipment uh, was recruited into this organisation. We have here the Clown, Clan McLeod Pipe Band, which has been being in Sydney for 75 years, having been formed in 1948 as the City of Mooresman Pipe Band. And the Anzac March that year was their first public performance. Second First Infantry Battalion, the very first battalion of the second AIF and um, commanded by Lieutenant Colonel Ian Campbell in, uh, in Greece and Crete, but they first went into action in Bardia uh, and captured Tobruk and Derna in uh, January and February of 1941, and then uh, later fought on the Kokoda Trail uh, and were still soldiering during the Ida B. Weewak campaign in 1945.
second second Australian Infantry Battalion. Um, again, part of that uh, first brigade, the 16th Brigade, raised in uh, in uh, 1939, and uh, uh, included such fine soldiers as as Ivan Doherty and uh, Charlie Green. Green commanded the Australians in uh, uh, in Korea and was killed in action in uh, uh, November of 1950. Um, they uh, they. Again, like the second first, saw action in that uh, campaign in Libya in uh, January, February of 1941, uh, and then later uh, in Greece in uh, April of 1941. The, uh, uh, the and second second third battalion, part of the uh, part of that same brigade. Although interesting, second, third uh, moved around a great deal, and they ended up uh, in uh, in Syria in uh, June, July of 1941, before returning to Australia and fighting on the Kokoda Trail in 1942. Second, fourth was part of the 19th Brigade, and uh, again fighting the Italians in uh, 1941. In, uh, in in Libya, uh, part of the Sixth Australian Division, and uh, and then later in Greece, and eventually returning to Australia, fighting in the Pacific. Second First Pioneers, essential tradesmen, um, also trained as as infantry soldiers. around there. We've seen the 51st Composite Anti-Aircraft Regiment on our screen. The 53rd Australian Composite Regiment was formed at Walgrove, Sydney in July 1943. The regiment served in Boona and early October, from early October until late February 1944. General Transport Companies. These men drove three and five ton trucks that transported and resupplied Australian troops across the Middle East and into the Southwest Pacific area separately. The convoys often came under artillery and small arms fire while delivering troops and supplies to the front line. The terrain in New Guinea was also particularly difficult, making it extremely challenging to deliver anything by road, so many men volunteered to work on the biscuit bombers, resupplying the troops from the air. the Willoughby City Band. It's a community brass band which was started in 1959 by Mr Reg Bishop as an A-grade competition band. They competed at the Australian National Band Championships and have had great success in competition throughout the 70s and 80s. And they have much supported at every possible Anzac Day parade since their formation. 
behind them, we can see the diamond-shaped colour patch of the 7th Australian Division, the Silent 7th, a, uh, a second division raised in Australia in 19, uh, early 1940, and uh, they were garrison troops in Palestine and uh, were there when uh, we went to war with the Vichy French. They fought the, uh, the campaign in Syria from uh, uh, June and July of 1941. And the 2nd, 5th, Field Regiment is led by Kenneth Boys. Formed on Anzac Day in 1940, it was Sir Roden Cutler's regiment. The 2nd 5th Regiment marched today to celebrate our last surviving member of the regiment, Gunner Jeff Bluey McIntosh, who celebrated his 102nd birthday at Brunswick's Heads in January. Bluey was also the last active member, being the person who completed the paperwork that formally disbanded the regiment in February 1946. And we have the 18th Brigade uh, working its way uh, down the march this morning. The 18th Brigade is made up of the 2nd 9th, 2nd 10th and 2nd 12th Battalions. During the Middle East campaign, the Brigade played a crucial role in the defence of Tobruk while under command of the 9th Division. Its finest hour came in New Guinea during the Battle of Milne Bay. With the help of militia units and RAF squadrons, the Brigade inflicted the first defeat on the Japanese. That was the banner of the 21 Brigade. Uh, this year marks 81 years since the Battle of Kokoda. And um, uh, between July and November 1942, Australian forces fought to prevent the Japanese from reaching Port Moresby and then pushed them back over the Owen Stanley Range. Uh, 21 Brigade was uh, commanded by Brigadier Arnold Potts, uh, who was sacked uh, on the Kokoda Trail during the crisis of command. 25th Brigade was another 7th Division unit and uh, as you can see from their battle honours, uh, they were originally formed in Britain, um, but later saw action against the Vichy French in Syria before deploying to New Guinea. The 2nd 31st Battalion is led by Ron Sheeran. Its the first campaign was in Syria, where Private James Gordon was awarded the Victoria Cross. After returning, they fought in the Kogoda and the Gona battles and participated in the capture of Ley. Their final campaign was at Balkapanan in 1945. Jimmy Gordon was our school gardener, by the way, uh, from Jinjin in Western Australia. I just thought I'd work that into the... Uh into the commentary, 2nd 33rd Battalion was formed in the UK and served in Egypt, Syria and Lebanon before being transferred to Australia for jungle training and then when the Japanese threat loomed. Uh, the 6th Machine Gun Battalion and the 7th Machine Gun Battalion is led by John Campbell. The 6th served in the Ramu Valley, New Guinea, at Gossip, lost four gunners in 1943, rescuing the crew of an American ship at Bass Point in New South Wales. Watching here, we have the King's School Cadet Corps Band. It's one of the oldest and largest in Australia, involving some 600 cadets. Ah, the 8th Division, the uh, distinctive oval-shaped colour patches. The uh, 8th Division, uh, tragically, were uh, lost during the uh, fall of Singapore, but they uh, fought extraordinarily well during the uh, Malayan campaign. Uh, uh, they also deployed brigades uh, on the islands as part of the Malay barrier. Um, 
islands to the north of us in February 1942, all of the units were overrun by the Japanese. Those who survived the fierce fighting spent the rest of the war as POWs. And uh, we, we know too well the appalling conditions that they served under. Uh, headquarters of the 8th Division uh, directed the campaign in Malaya and Singapore. And uh, of course, we know about General Go um, uh, Gordon Bennett. Uh, escaping and leaving his men to uh, captivity. Uh, the gunners of the 8th Division coming now, 2nd 5th Field Regiment, Royal Australian Artillery, and uh, they... Uh, yeah, 2nd 15th fought extraordinarily well at the Muwa River and uh, Gemas during the Malayan campaign, inflicted very heavy losses on the Japanese. Uh, but after the surrender, uh, they suffered uh, three and a half years in captivity in Changi on the Burma-Thailand Railway and, uh, of course, as slave labourers in Borneo and Japan. Engineers of the 8th Division, including 2nd 12th Field Company, provided that... Uh, the And there we have the 8th Division signals. Um, this section of the unit were attached to Gull, Sparrow and Lark forces in the islands. Of the 705 members who became POWs, 195 of those men died during captivity. 54 honours and awards were granted to members of that unit. Among these was Captain Lionel Matthews, a prisoner of war who directed an underground intelligence organisation. Sadly, he was executed by the Japanese in 1944 for this involvement and was awarded the George Cross posthumously. 22nd Brigade was one of the infantry brigades attached to the 8th Division, included the 2nd 18th, 2nd 19th and 2nd 20th Battalions. 2nd 18th Battalion's marching past now. The battalion's motto, I'm not even going to try and pronounce it, but hand to the torch of the Legion. Two veterans remained early in, on in the campaign. I believe that um, early on in the campaign, the uh, Malayan campaign, and they inflicted a reversal on the Japanese troops at Jamalung. They fought gallantly in the defence of Singapore before being forced to surrender. Four brothers from the Colneso family fought at the fall of Singapore. Two were killed. Colenso Street in the Sydney suburb of Kingsford, where they lived, is named in their honour. 2nd 20th Battalion marching past, led by Dennis Baker, another distinguished battalion of the Malayan campaign. They were posted to Mersing on the east coast of the peninsula. The battalion bore the brunt of the Japanese attack on Singapore on the night of the 8th of February 1942. By the end of that week, there were over 500 casualties. After the surrender, more than 275 members died of, as POWs. Three quarters of the battalion died in action or as prisoners. This is the Castle Hill RSL Pipe Band. And it was originally incorporated as the Epping and District Scottish Society Pipe Band back in 1932 as the Pipe Band of the Epping and District Scottish Society. Vance Tartan is Cameron of Erect. And the aim of the band is to promote Scottish music. The band participates in dawn services for Castle Hill RSL as well as North Ride RSL before they do our march through town here in Sydney. The 23rd Brigade was broken up. It was part of the, um, the Malay barrier and uh, participated in these uh, uh, bird forces. 2nd 21st Battalion were Gulf Force, 2nd 20, 22nd Battalion part of Lark Force and 2nd uh, 40th Battalion were part of Sparrow Force.
And the 2nd 30th Battalion is on the screen. The 2nd 30th Battalion AIF was formed on the 17th of October 1940 with Lieutenant Colonel F.G. Gallagher as commanding officer. After training at Tamworth and Bathurst, the battalion went to Singapore and Malaya. It became the first Australian battalion to meet the Japanese in battle. Yeah, Black Jack Gulligan spent the rest of his life trying to uh, make sure that his, his men were remembered and uh, uh, there are dozens of war memorials around New South Wales that were opened by, uh, by Black Jack uh, through the 1950s and 60s. I believe they were known as Gulligan's Greyhounds after their famous leader. The Australian Army Service Corps of the 8th Division marching past uh, at, at, at present the... Um, the I can't imagine how difficult their job was uh, and those roads in Malaya trying to keep all of the units resupplied. Here we have the Elite Band Riverwood. The drum band has formed from the members of the Riverwood Squadron. And it's known locally and internationally, including representing Australia at the 2019 Pearl Harbor Memorial Parade in Hawaii. They've performed in strict parades and ceremonies. The cadets participated in a three-day education program there at Pearl Harbor's Aviation Museum and even slept on board the ship USS Missouri. One of the militia battalions marched past earlier, the 8th Battalion, uh, and uh, uh, it had AIF as a post nominal, indicating that every member of the unit joined, volunteered to serve anywhere in the world, uh, but initially they were a, a militia battalion, so many of them conscripts who were volunteering for service only in Australia. And we can see here the 8th Division Medical Corps contingent, the 2nd 12th Field Ambulance. During six years of service, over 200 men were killed, more than any other non-combatant unit of the war. Some of those members were sent to Timor and Ambon to support Gull and Sparrow forces and were either killed or captured following the Japanese advance. Ninth Australian Division with their very uh, easily identified uh, T-shaped colour patch awarded as a, uh, uh, a battle honour after, the, um, after their defence of Tobruk in 1941. The division also fought in both battles at Alamein and uh, later um, made famous for their operations at uh, Tarakan and Borneo. The divisional commander was Leslie Morshead during the uh, defence of Tobruk. Is Ross Argent uh, leading the Second Third Anti Tank Regiment? His uh, his father commanded the uh, commanded the regiment. They uh, uh, were initially a tank attack unit, uh, providing mobile uh, anti tank guns to the uh, to the Ninth Australian Division uh, during the siege of Tobruk and later during the battles of El Alamein. Second Fourth Light Anti Aircraft Regiment uh, was formed in the Middle East, and their Bofors guns provided valuable support to the 9th Division, particularly at the Second Battle of Al Alamein and later campaigns uh, in the Southwest Pacific. And we can see from their, their battle honours that they fought through 1943 and 44 during the Huon Valley campaign. I can't imagine what it was like to try and lug a Bofors gun across that mountain range.
second 13th uh, infantry battalion uh, was another unit of the uh, of the ninth division uh, that uh, fought initially at, at Tobruk uh, and then later in the battles of El Alamein uh, returning to Australia to participate in operations in northern New Guinea and then in 1945 the uh, Oboe operations in Borneo. Second 32nd Battalion's being led by John Grang. Uh, Second 32nd was formed after having assisted in the Blitz in London. It was another Australian unit that was formed in the UK. Sent by ship to North Africa, the battalion served with distinction at Tobruk and El Alamein. After the desert campaigns, the battalion took part in the amphibious landings in New Guinea at Ley and Finchhaven and went on to take the Japanese surrender at Beipa in Borneo in 1945. And we can see the 26th Infantry Brigade on our screen, led by Geoffrey Dalton. Their first action was in the Western Desert in April 1941, and they later fought at Benghazi, Tobruk and El Alamein in North Africa, and in New Guinea at Ley, Fischensen and Sattelberg. And Ron Kennedy is leading the 2nd, 3rd Pioneer Battalion. They were formed in Cowra in 1940, and the unit was a combination of engineers and infantry. It was used at both Alamein battle and in fighting for Ley and Finchhaven in New Guinea. Second, third were the uh, only, was the only pioneer battalion to earn a Victoria Cross. In 1945, second, third pioneers took part in the infantry seaborne assault on Tarakan Island, and uh, Corporal Jack Mackey was posthumously awarded the Victoria Cross, uh, leading his, his troops up the um, the ridge line that dominated the airfield on Tarakan. Here we have the Hornsby RSL pipe band. And the band has been serving the community since 1961. And they're wearing the Maclean of Lockbuie from the Isle of Mull. The band performs at civic and charitable functions such as the Bundanoon Gathering of the Clans and Nelson Bay Highland Games. Another 9th Division unit, the 2nd 2nd Machine Gun Battalion. The, uh, uh, these were a bit of a hangover from the, the First World War and uh, uh, to provide automatic weapons fire in support of infantry assaults. They were led by David Martin and uh, uh, was a Sydney-based unit raised in 1940. Played an important part in the Western Desert battles, fighting alongside the infantry, defending the Alamein line and later in New Guinea. Uh, the men fought at Ley and uh, supported the 20th Brigade at Finshaven. Towards the end of the war, they supported the landings in Borneo. Milne Force was, uh, the defence of Milne Bay was an essential part of protecting Australia from the, the Japanese. Had Milne Bay, Guadalcanal and Moresby fallen to the Japanese, then the supply lines with the United States would have been uh, cut and uh, Australia would have uh, been virtually defenceless. And uh, so the, the extraordinary job uh, of defending Milne Bay by the RAAF, by the, uh, uh, the AIF and the AMF um, was uh, an Australian legend, if you like. We've got some uh, militia units that volunteered to serve anywhere in the world. 31st and 51st Infantry Battalions fought in Dutch New Guinea, were part of Meraki Force, defending the, defending the southern approaches to, uh, uh, to New Guinea. 
and uh, later went on to serve in New Britain. And we have the 55th, 53rd uh, Battalion, the Mice of Moresby, led by Rob Denny and Peter Dowling. They were formed around 1956 from surviving veterans of the 53rd Battalion AIB and the 55th Battalion, and the 55th, 53rd Battalion AIF. Since formation, the association members have met for a meeting and lunch each Anzac Day, and during the first week of December, a commemoration service is held at Sydney Cenotaph. is the Christian Brothers Lewisham Concert Band. And that band has been marching a few times in the City of Sydney Anzac Day March. got the um, militia divisions marching past now, the, uh, the 5th Division and the 11th Division. Uh, these were uh, initially made up of conscript units um, that were recruited for Australia and its territories only, and uh, uh, so they couldn't be deployed overseas uh, beyond Australia's territory. Of course, once the Japanese landed in Papua in July of 1942, we could uh, send the the uh, militiamen because Papua being an Australian territory and uh, so they were the first to uh, face the Japanese in our waters after the 8th Division had been overrun in uh, Singapore and in the islands uh, that now make up Indonesia, the islands of the, of the uh, uh, Netherlands East Indies. We are um, also marking a number of anniversaries this year with Anzac Day, and among them, of course, is uh, 50 years since Australia's withdrawal from Vietnam. Yeah, the longest war of the uh, that Australia was involved in during the the 20th century. The first Australians to deploy to Vietnam were uh, the uh, members of the Australian Army training team in uh, in uh, June, July of 19. 62, and uh, then the last uh, members of the, the training team and the Saigon Guard were withdrawn in early 1973. So uh, uh, some 56,000 Australians served during the, the war in Vietnam. And uh, uh, it, of course, it became extremely controversial because we had a selective national service scheme during the, during the war, and some 60% of uh, Australia's commitment was made up of uh, conscript soldiers. The uh, the bulk of the fighting was done by the Royal Australian Regiment, uh, that rose to nine battalions during the uh, during the war. Um, but uh, first in, last out were the Australian Army training team advisers, veterans of uh, wars dating back to the 39-45 war.
and we can see the 36th Australian Infantry Battalion on our screen, St George's English Rifle Regiment led by Colin Moyer. Known as Ike's Marines, after Commanding Officer Lieutenant Colonel Ike Isaac Inchen, they made an amphibious landing with captured Japanese barges off the coast of New Britain in 1945. They were the last battalion to fight the Japanese on the ground in the jungles near the Mavello River of New Britain, where Sergeant Ron Ryan single-handedly turned back a force of 100 Japanese who charged the Australians before dawn. This was the last battle on the ground in arm-to-arm -arm combat recorded against the attacking Japanese force, and Sergeant Ryan was decorated for his actions. One of the longest serving battalions in the Southwest Pacific area, the battalion was disbanded in 1945. And 3rd Division Artillery marching past um, at the moment, the red and blue of the uh, of the artillery again uh, a, a militia unit in, serv in serving and supporting a, uh, a an in initially a militia battalion uh, but most of these men served um, volunteered for the Australian Imperial Force so that they could be deployed anywhere in the Pacific in uh, the final years of the Second World War. of the Australian Field Companies, we can see the fifth field company on our screen, Engineers. Now we have Kambala Marching Band. This band has more than 100 students, comprising years 5 to 12 at Kambala. And the majority of the girls are in years 6, 7, 8 and 9. 2014 was in fact the first time that uh, Kambala Marching Band participated in the Anzac Day March. wonderful connection from that uh, 2014 march resulted. David Morris from 4th Battalion of the Royal Australian Regiment wrote to congratulate the girls on their effort. And after further correspondence, three veterans attended Kambala School Assembly to recognise the girls' efforts. Veterans also giving a presentation depicting their time in Vietnam, as well as presenting the Kambala marching band with a plaque. We can see the 4th Battalion, Australian Infantry Battalion AIF, first in Australia after training embarked on HMAS Western Australia in 1942, uh, disembarking at Fremantle. 4th Battalion was a militia battalion and uh, the, uh, the great old character Bede Tongs was a, um, who we lost a few years ago tragically but he earned his military medal charging the Japanese positions outside Kokoda Village in November 1942 and uh, earned the military medal for bravery in the field and uh, was a great champion of um, turning the Kokoda Trail into a, uh, uh, a commemoration and a, a pilgrimage walk for Australians and walked the trail himself on uh, dozens of occasions. 
British Commonwealth Occupation Force. Uh, these were the uh, uh, veterans of uh, who were part of Australia's peacekeeping contingent, if you like, that uh, deployed to Japan after the Japanese surrender in September of 1945. They arrived in uh, in Japan in February of 1946, and of course. Tragically, many of them, uh, the, the headquarters was uh, on the outskirts of uh, Hiroshima and they, they patrolled a lot of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, the uh, areas affected by the atomic bomb. But uh, uh, they played a vital role uh, in disarming uh, and destroying Japanese weapons of war and were on site in Japan when the war in Korea broke out. And, uh, so they were able to provide infantry and other support units for the Australian Army's deployment to uh, Korea in late 1950. Timing worked out quite nicely. There was just a fly past by a uh, Dakota transport from the Historical Aircraft Restoration Society down in Wollongong. Rough Dakotas were used to support the British Commonwealth Occupation Forces in Japan for about two years before the uh, before the route was taken over by Qantas. The Australian Army training team Vietnam uh, is led by Doug Tier, and uh, this was the first Australian unit committed to South Vietnam in uh, uh, middle 1962. Operating alone or in small groups, members trained and advised South Vietnamese units and the local people from the hill tribes, the Monty Nards. More than a thousand men served over a 10 year period, making it the longest serving operational unit. Uh, in the Australian Army uh, in, the, uh, in the 20th century. 33 members of the AATTV were killed in action and uh, members from the team received over 100 individual awards, including four Victoria Crosses. We would also like to acknowledge the passing in the last week of Vietnam veteran Lieutenant Colonel Terence Smith of the Australian Army Training Command. You'll see the uh, part of their symbol, Persevere, with the uh, the symbol of the, the Montagnards, the Hill Tribes. Headquarters, 1st Australian Task Force, uh, based at Nui Dap in South Vietnam. Um, the uh, D&E platoons uh, served in South Vietnam from April 1966 until December 1971. The unit includes, uh, the, it's the longest serving infantry platoon in South Vietnam. Uh, it was continually reinforced throughout the, uh, the war. First ARU, Australian Reinforcement Unit, uh, deployed its members through the DNE platoon, and uh, it was only removed from the order of battle when First Australian Task Force withdrew from Nui Dat in late 1971. The Royal Australian Armoured Corps Association just marched past and uh, they're leading the 1st Armoured Regiment formed in 1949 and operating Centurion tanks during the Vietnam War. Uh, they performed well in the jungle, believe it or not. Um, they uh, played a significant role during the battles of Balmoral and Coral. Bin Bar, of course, uh, in June of 1969 and helped to clear Viet Cong bunker systems during operations in 1971. The Battle of Song Ka, and uh, I'm sure Gary Mackay will be watching today, uh, earned his military cross with four RAR, and, uh, uh, but uh, relied very heavily on the tanks during the, uh, the operations at Long Khan. More recently, the regiment has served in Afghanistan, East Timor, and the Solomon Islands. We also saw marching there the regimental band of the 1st 15th Royal New South Wales Lancers. The 3rd Cavalry Regiment Association operating M113 armoured personnel carriers. This regiment participated in every major Australian task force operation in Vietnam. 
They played a crucial role during the Battle of Long Tan and provided defence for fire support bases. Coral and Balmoral they also took part in the Battle of Binbar in 69. 20 members of the regiment were killed and 110 wounded. Lances. The Royal Australian Artillery Association is led by the President, Lieutenant Colonel Condon. The Royal uh, Regiment of Australian Artillery was formed in 1948 and includes gunners from both the regular and reserve army. The association provides the banner to unite the various post-Second World War gunner associations and units. A field battery. Uh, formed in 1871 as part of the New South Wales Colonial Defence Force. Uh, it's now in its 146th year and we first saw overseas service in the Sudan and we uh, sent a, a battery to support the New South Wales uh, Infantry Battalion in 1885. Um, it was in South Africa during the, uh, the Second Anglo-Boer War and of course at Gallipoli and on the Western Front during the Great War. Um, and in New Guinea during the Second World War. Post-war, the battery saw service during the Malayan Emergency and the Indonesian Confrontation. The First Field Regiment Association, made up of 101st, 103rd and 105th Field Batteries, uh, likewise having a, uh, a history dating back to the Great War. Post the Second World War, they served during the Malayan Emergency in Vietnam uh, on a rotational basis from 1965 to 1970. And since Vietnam, the regiment has been to East Timor, the Solomon Islands, Iraq and Afghanistan. And then we have 101 Field Battery, 101 Battery, 1 Field Regiment, led by John Bertram. They served in Malaya and deployed twice to Vietnam during the war, primarily in support of 6 RAR. One hundred two field battery and uh, the Coral Battery. During the Battle of Coral in Vietnam, these gunners had to defend their artillery pieces in close quarter combat when the base was infiltrated and uh, overrun through uh, one RAR's mortar platoon. A one forward gun position was fought over. Uh, indeed, the gun was even captured, and uh, uh, they re retook the gun during a counterattack. Three members were decorated for their part in the battle. One of their guns is on display at the Australian War Memorial. So there you, there you can see their, their banner, 102nd. They call themselves Coral after the, the uh, extraordinary defence of that firebase in 1968. Here we have the Manly Warringah Pipe Band, which has been entertaining locals on the Northern Beaches for almost 75 years. They have also travelled many times to the United Kingdom, performing at the Royal Edinburgh Military Tattoo in Scotland. Last year also performing 
at the Basel Tattoo in Switzerland. Third Division Artillery uh, and uh, the, the oval colour patch, the uh, similar in style to that worn by the 8th Division during the Second War. Third Division was uh, Monash's division, trained in Britain and then deployed to France at the end of 1916, the final phase of the, uh, the battles on the Somme, um, and, but uh, really performed extraordinarily well uh, in the, the battles fighting German artillery in the salient. Uh, around Ypres in Belgium in 1917. More gunners uh, wounded than in any other theatre of the Great War. And Sevenfield Regiment, Royal Australian Artillery Association, is led by Brigadier John Keefe. Originally raised as the Seventh Field Artillery Brigade in March 1916 as part of artillery component of the 3rd Division AIF. On active service in France and Belgium during 1916 to 1918, they sustained 129 men killed in action and some 500 wounded. After they were disbanded in 1919, they were re-raised in 1921 as part of the reorganised Australian Militia Forces, part of the Coastal Defence for New South Wales and later Western Australia until again disbanded in 1943. After the Second World War, they were... Oops, sorry. Yes, they were re-raised as part of the Citizens Militia Force in 1948 and continued to serve Australia until disbanded for a third time in January 2013. And their lineage continues through the 7th Battery, 9th Regiment of the Royal Australian Artillery. Ninth Heavy and Ninth Land Light Anti-Aircraft Association uh, includes those who served in the 1st, 9th, 16th and 23rd Anti-Aircraft Regiments. The post-Second World War Heavy Anti-Aircraft Regiments, 1st, 9th, 16th and 23rd, became the 9th Heavy Anti-Aircraft Regiment in January 1955, armed with 3.7-inch mobile anti-aircraft guns until these were retired in 1962. Uh, the regiment was redesignated 9th Light Anti-Aircraft Regiment and was re-equipped with 40mm Bofors guns. Following a further review of the Army after the Vietnam War in 1973, 9th Light, Light, Light Anti-Aircraft Regiment was removed from the Orbat uh, and members were transferred to the 7th Field Regiment. 18th Light Anti-Aircraft this regiment was raised in 1952 to train National Service and Army Reserve volunteers. The regiment's unique in the history of the reserve as it was placed on standby on two occasions for overseas service. 1956 during the Suez Crisis and 64 during confrontation with Indonesia. Here we have the New South Wales Public Schools Millennium Marching Band. The band's main focus is providing fun and entertainment. The ensemble includes students from years 7 to 12, and they rehearse one weekend a month. They take the name Millennium Band, performing 
back in the year of the Sydney Olympics in 2000. And they've developed into a group focusing on parade marching, drill performances and choreography performances. We saw a locating battery go past earlier, a vital part of the artillery, just to, uh, to try and identify exactly where the enemy were so that uh, direct fire could be brought down on them. And uh, following this marching band are the Royal Australian Engineers, the distinctive red and blue. The um, Royal Australian Engineers Retired Officers Association is going to be led by Colonel David Dufour. Membership comprises of regular army and reservists, serving and ex-serving returned and non-returned members who have served the Royal Australian Engineers. Those marching include regular army, reserve, army and reservists, serving and ex-serving returned and non-returned members. First field squadron known as the Tunnel Rats. They performed some extraordinary tasks in Vietnam, descending into the tunnels that the Viet Cong had built, armed only with uh, a pistol and a torch. They were among... One field squadron known as the Tunnel Rats. They perform some extraordinary tasks in Vietnam, descending into tunnels armed with only a pistol and a torch. They were among the bravest soldiers in Vietnam, doing a job that many others could not do. And behind One Field Squadron, we can see 17 Construction Squadron Association, led by Warren Officer Class 2, Simon Lovell. He is the Vice President of the Association. A little bear will fix it. Uh, the banner shows the squadron symbol, and uh, which applies, describes their construction. Those guys will turn their hand to anything. One of their veteran members served with us at the, their, well, worked with us at the WA Maritime Museum. Uh, formed in uh, 1949, the squadron's now based at Holsworthy. Um, the squadron served in South Vietnam from 1966 to 1971, uh, across Pacific nations during the 1980s, and Namibia as far as, as part of the United Nations peacekeeping operation, where the squadron was awarded the very first honour distinction for outstanding service in a non-war zone. You see the pale blue of the uh, United Nations as part of 17 construction squadrons deployment to UNTAC. 32 small ship squadron RAE Association. The motto displayed on the association banner means never to be towed. This is the Army's Navy and operated ocean going tank landing ships during the period of 1959 to 1971. They saw active service in Borneo and South Vietnam, the landing ship Clive Steel being attacked while negotiating a river in South Vietnam, sustaining three direct hits, but there were no casualties. There's the Australian Water Transport, RAE AIF. Australian Water Transport Company was originally formed as the tug and lighter unit for Tobruk, loading and unloading for the Army in the Middle East. They returned to Australia in 1942 and moved to north to New Guinea as the Australian Water Transport, RAE AIF, which formed up at Chowder Bay in Sydney to provide logistic support to the troops. 
This included taking troops to shore, retrieving the wounded, and providing necessary supplies in areas that could not be reached by conventional means. And here we have approaching the northern suburbs Pipe Band. Formed in 1952, the band is self-funded and made up of volunteers who have come from all over the Sydney metropolitan area, as well as Wollongong and the Central Coast. And members from all walks of life and backgrounds, but are united in their love of pipe bands and Scottish music. 21 Construction Regiment was raised in 1950 originally as a supplementary reserve unit and later becoming part of the General Reserve. Members were recruited from the skilled workforce of various government organisations such as Department of Main Roads and Public Works. Uh, over the years the regiment has provided the Australian Defence Force with a valuable engineering capability. As part of the integrated ADF, members have served in all theatres of operations. The regiment was disbanded in 2013 and members became part of the 5th Engineer Regiment. New South Wales Sappers Association, led by the President Major Brian Maloof, who currently serves as a reservist in the Royal Australian Army Medical Corps. Ubiquay meaning everywhere. Sappers are army engineers who undertake specialist tasks to assist the mobility of our own forces, impede the mobility of the enemy and provide essential services to our own troops. And we can see the Royal Australian Survey Corps, the map markers of the Australian Army. The Survey Corps took part in post-war reconstruction in Australia, including the National Mapping Program. They were also sent overseas as part of an aid program in Papua New Guinea, Indonesia and the Southwest Pacific Nations from 1966 to 1971. A section was deployed to South Vietnam. In 1996, the Corps was disbanded. and the Royal Australian Corps of Signals. The association is led by their president, Major General Paul Irving, AM, PSM, RFD. He is a former commander of 8th Signals Regiment and the 2nd Division. And the banner is carried by the 142nd Signal Squadron, based at Dundas and Holsworthy, and shows the many areas of operations the Corps has been involved in since the Second World War. Knox Grammar School Pipe Band here. The band's located in Wurrunga on Sydney's North Shore. Knox Grammar is a uniting church school of boys founded in 1924 in the tradition of John Knox, a Scottish 16th century reformer. The band wears them at first in Tartan and there are approximately 100 students with the junior band, having an additional 30 members. The Royal Australian Regiment Association is being led by General Horry Howard, AOMC, and uh, the Royal Australian Regiment Association was part of that British Commonwealth Occupation Force in Japan. Uh, it uh, dates its history to 1948, when uh, the 56th, 55th and 57th Infantry Battalions uh, became 1st, 2nd and 3rd Battalions of the Royal Australian Regiment. And uh, during the war in Vietnam, the, uh, the regiment rose to nine battalions. You see the second battalion, the men in black, 
and uh, marching past and uh, second battalion served in korea uh in earned their first battle honor at samachon in july 1953 the battle of the hook and then served in south vietnam with distinction on two tours of duty initially in the tet offensive and then finally during the battle of long khan third battalion the royal australian regiment the old faithful battalion uh fought at uh, Kapyong and Mariang San in Korea in 1951 and then served again two tours of duty in South Vietnam uh, including the defense of firebase coral of Balmoral. Fourth Battalion the Royal Australian Regiment led by David Morris, raised in 1964. 4 RAR was the first regular army battalion raised on Australian soil and uh, it served at the tail end of the confrontation with Indonesia in Borneo. Served two tours in Vietnam with, um, a, with uh, New Zealand infantry companies attached, becoming an Anzac battalion. It also fought the last infantry battle at Nui Lai on uh, September 21st, 1971. 5th Battalion, the Royal Australian Regiment, the Tiger Battalion, um, first unit to take uh, national servicemen to South Vietnam. Uh, John War commanded the battalion, and uh, uh, this 5-7 is being led by James Thorpe, but uh, they served their second second uh, tour of duty in Vietnam in 69-70, and uh, under uh, Colonel Colin Khan. Five RAR's battle honour for Vietnam includes Bin Bar in July 69. Sixth Battalion, the Royal Australian Regiment, uh, we, we remember most, I suppose, for the Battle of Long Tan. Uh, on the 18th of August 1966, Delta Company from 6 RAR under uh, uh, Major Harry Smith. 104 soldiers, a few New Zealand gunners, bumped into 2,500 Viet Cong and North Vietnamese Army regulars uh, in the Long Tan Rubber, just out of Nui Dat, and uh, stayed alive for over three and a half hours until rescued by A Company from 6 RAR and, uh, and armoured personnel carriers. Seventh Battalion, the Royal Australian Regiment. Porky's people, and uh, because they, uh, they had a Razorback as their, their symbol. During their first tour in Vietnam, they took part in Operation Coburg where C Company assaulted by a North, a North Vietnamese bunker system. The fighting lasted three days and was the longest sustained attack fought by Australians during the war. 8 RAR, the Grey 8. The battalion was raised in 1966 and initially served for 18 months in Malaysia before deploying to Vietnam. Here we have the St George and Sutherland Scottish Pipe Band. They formed in 1946, comprising of returned servicemen after World War II. And they've participated in Anzac Day and Remembrance Day commemorations for more than 75 years. They were initially led by two McGregor brothers. They proudly wear the McGregor Tub to this day. They're followed by 9 RAR. The 9 RAR deployed to Vietnam for 12 months from November 60, 1968 uh, and spent 80% of its time on operations. Uh, of course, Sir Peter Cosgrove, 
uh, earned his military cross while serving with the 9th Battalion, the Royal Australian Regiment. In fact, we got a, a, a glimpse of uh, the former Governor General marching with his uh, with his mates and uh, the, the blokes he served alongside in in, uh, in Vietnam in, in 68, 69. Uh, 9th Battalion was later combined with 8 RAR and there was the banner of the of 2 RAR and 4 RAR. The, after the war in Vietnam, the, uh, the downsizing of the uh, infantry component of Australia's army meant that several of the battalions were, uh, were combined and uh, 8 and 9 joined together. 5, 7, as you can see, uh, joined and became a mechanised unit uh, travelling to, to battle in M113 um, armoured personnel carriers. band Moor Bank. This is a drum band that was formed by members from the Moor Bank Squadron. And of course a great privilege and honour. They really enjoy participating in Sydney's Anzac Day March. Supporting veterans and the serving men and women of the Australian Defence Forces. And behind the band, we have the Australian rifle company Butterworth, led by James Thorpe, formed in 1973 with the linking of the 2nd and the 4th Royal Australian Regiment Rifle Company, Butterworth, is one of the Australian Army's longest deployments, 50 years, and it is still going. And the Australian Special, Special Air Service Association, New South Wales, is led by Pat Doherty today. This elite group of soldiers was formed in Western Australia in 1957 and was first deployed during the confrontation with Indonesia. During the Vietnam War, it conducted reconnaissance patrols throughout the Australian area of responsibility. But this is the uh, the banner of a Z Special Unit, which was a training unit during the Second World War for special operations behind uh, uh, Japanese lines, and um, most famously the Semit and the Jaywick operations uh, into Singapore and later into Borneo to discover the strengths of the Japanese units there. Uh, Jaywick obviously placing mines on the Japanese on uh, Japanese warships in Singapore Harbour. SAS uh, first deployed against the Indonesians as a company uh, during confrontation and then later as a regiment, squadron by squadron, they rotated through the war in, in Vietnam and uh, most recently have served in every Australian conflict since Vietnam uh, as well as a number of covert deployments, an essential part of the uh, uh, the Australian Army in uh, intelligence gathering and uh, providing specialist soldiers. And the Commander Regiment Association led by Ivan Kelly. The first commando company was formed in Sydney in 1955 and was the first Australian Special Forces unit raised after the Second World War. It has a very rich and diverse history. It is now part of one commando regiment and is a mixture of regular and reserve personnel who have deployed to East Timor, the Solomon Islands and Afghanistan.
The second Commando Regiment was established in June 2009 when it was renamed from the 4th Battalion, the Royal Australian Regiment. Their motto is, without warning. During operations in Afghanistan, the regiment suffered nine soldiers killed in action and 60 wounded. Corporal Cameron Baird was killed in action in Afghanistan and posthumously awarded the Victoria Cross for Australia for acts of gallantry. The regiment's also been awarded, awarded a unit commendation, which is proudly affixed to their colours. They, uh, you can see the, uh, the commando dagger over the top of the double diamonds that are made famous by Australian independent companies during the Second World War. This is the Salvation Army Brass Band. And they have a long history in Australia, first establishing in 1881 in Adelaide, South Australia. By the late 1990s, Australia had 200 senior, 130 junior Salvation Army Brass Bands. Behind them are the Australian Army Aviation Corps, first formed in 1968, but with a history that dates back to the First World War with the Australian Flying Corps. Since 2009, the Australian, so the Army's aircraft are exclusively rotary wing, that is, helicopters, including uh, at Holsworthy Barracks. So 161 recce flight just went past. The, uh, the unit uh, was to support the Australian Task Force in Vietnam by providing aerial surveillance and reconnaissance. It lost three killed in action during the seven-year commitment, and the aircraft often sustained battle am damage. Lieutenant Colonel Peter Court is leading the Australian Army Intelligence Corps Association. And here we have the Corrective Services New South Wales Band coming through the march for a second time. They've been providing essential ceremonial support to Corrective Services New South Wales and the New South Wales government since forming in 1981. Comprised of 45 professional casual musicians and they led by full-time musical director, Deputy Superintendent John Buckley, who was appointed to this role more than 10 years ago. Major principal musician Andrew Robinson is the longest serving member of the band. Yeah, that's certainly the star shaped badge of the Royal Australian Corps of Transport. Uh, they're marking their 50th year anniversary. They're led by Major Owen Ether. He's carrying the walking stick that um, belonged to his father, Major General Ken Ether, um, one of the heroes of the Kokoda Trail campaign. He wears the insignia of the unit citation for gallantry won by his unit uh, 84 transport platoon, which was part of the battle of battles on the fire bases of Coral and Balmoral, part of the 1st Australian Task Force. Three Transport Association, led by the Association President Gary Smith, uh, is one of the longest serving transport units in the Australian Army, having first been formed in 1914. It served in the Second World War and since 1948 has been a citizens military force and army reserve unit. And we can see the Royal Australian Army Medical Corps Association. The association today is leading the 1st Australian Field Hospital personnel, the 1st Field Ambulance personnel and the 5th Field Ambulance personnel. It's presently named the 1st 5th Health Company of the 2nd Battalion after the reorganisation of the Royal Australian Army Medical Corps last year. 
The first field hospital operated a military hospital in Vung Tau, South Vietnam, for over three years from 1968, achieving a survival rate of 99%. And the fifth field ambulance was formed in 1915 and served at Gallipoli and France during the First World War and across the Middle East and New Guinea in the Second World War. This is the Presbyterian Lady Sydney Pipes and Drums, a part of the independent girls' school at Croydon, celebrating 135 years since founding. And a big contingent of the Royal Australian Electrical and Mechanical Engineers, led by Lieutenant Colonel Kerry Tunbridge. The Royal Australian Electrical and Mechanical Engineers were formed in 1942 from the Ordnance Corps and the Survey Corps and granted the title Royal by King George VI in 1948 in response to their dedicated performance during the Second World War. And we can see the Catering Corps as our next contingent and the motto of the Corps is We Sustained. The Corps was formed in 1943 on the instigation of Lieutenant Colonel Sir Stanton Hicks, an Army Medical Officer who saw the need to improve the standard of food and nutrition for our fighting troops. This year marks 80 years of catering service to the Australian Army and consists of some 300 regular and reserve members. Followed by the Australian Army Legal Corps, led by Colonel Jim Waddell and uh, previous head of the Corps. For the troops and with the troops, the Royal Australian Army Corps of Military Police. Previously known as the Provost, they are another unit celebrating 100 years of service, having been formed in 1916. They've served in every conflict since World War II, Korea, Malaya, Vietnam, where Corporal Brown was killed in action. More recently, they have been to Namibia, Somalia, Cambodia, Cambodia, Rwanda, East Timor and the Middle East and has assisted the United Nations investigating into war crimes. the Royal Australian Army Nursing Corps Association, and we see there the New South Wales and the ACT branch, led by Robin Hankel, a wonderful nursing officer I've had the privilege of serving with. The red jackets and the grey trousers symbolise the traditional grey dresses and the scarlet capes worn by nurses up until the end of the Vietnam War. Australian Army nurses have served continuously since the Boer War and are still accompanying Australian troops wherever they are deployed, both in Australia and overseas. Women's Royal Australian Army Corps, uh, led by Gay Hutchison, established in 1951 during the Korean conflict, it continued for 34 years until 1985 when women were fully integrated into the Army. The Women's Royal Australian Army Corps School at, St. Ge at George's Heights on Sydney's Lower North Shore, overlooking Sydney Harbour.
believe that's Officer Training Unit at, from uh, Skyville in Sydney's northwest. Established in 1965 at the former Migrant Hostel, these men were national servicemen chosen to become officers who had to undertake a gruelling 22-week training course. During eight years, over 1,800 graduated as second lieutenants, including the former Deputy Prime Minister, Tim Fisher, and the former Premier of Victoria, Jeff Kennett. They were posted to army units in Australia, Malaysia, Borneo, and Vietnam. Here we have Sydney Thistle Highland Pipe Band, a well-respected and long-established pipe band in Sydney. Formed in 1918 at the conclusion of World War One, and they first participated in the Anzac Day March held that year. They've been in existence continuously since then and are currently celebrating their 105th year. Indeed, the National Servicemen's Association, led by John Kennedy, known as Nashos, of course, this contingent represents two periods of national service. The earlier period during the 1950s saw over 200,000 18-year-olds entering three branches of the armed service, armed forces. And dad, indeed, my dad did his Nashos in 1954. Uh, they were stationed at centres all over the country. Uh, second period lasted from 1965 until 1972. Uh, men turning 20 had to register uh, for their birthday ballot. Those whose birth dates were selected were required for two years of military service in the army and liable to be sent overseas for combat duty. Some 64,000 young men were called up with 15,000 sent to Vietnam. Others served in Malaysia, Borneo, Papua New Guinea and here in Australia. Over 200 national servicemen were killed in Vietnam during that war. In fact, Australia was the first country to introduce national service outside wartime, or the first English-speaking country, when we introduced national service in 1912 for 1911 for 12-year-olds. So uh, uh, we have a proud tradition of compulsory military service in Australia. And now we can see Army Reserve Forces contingent. Coming down the street, we have 30,000 strong Army Reserve personnel as part of Australia's national defence capability. Today, Reserve Force contingent is marching behind the 2nd Division banner. The Royal New South Wales Regiment Association is led by Roger Perry and uh, 1st 19th Royal New South Wales Regiment Association represents the 19th Battalion of the 1st and 2nd 19th Battalions of the 2nd AIF and 1st 19th Royal New South Wales Regiment, current Army Reserve Battalion that carries on the proud traditions of its predecessors while serving as part of the Australian Army's 2nd Division and providing essential support in times of emergency such as floods, fires, natural disasters and contributing to overseas forces as required. The Association of the 4th Infantry Battalions is led by Warren Officer Class 1, Warren Barnes. The 4th was raised as part of the AIF during the First World War and saw action in Gallipoli and the trenches of the Western Front. During the Second World War, the 2nd 14th took part in the Huon Peninsula and Atapi Wewak campaigns. The 
second, the 17th Infantry Battalion was formed as part of the 1st AIF in 1915 and served at Gallipoli and the Western Front. This battalion can actually trace its history back to 1860 when a unit of the New South Wales Volunteer Rifles was raised in St Leonard's. Now linked to the 2nd Battalion, to be the 2nd 17th Battalion, the unit headquarters are in Pimble, but other companies are based across the metropolitan area of Sydney, the Central Coast and Newcastle. We have here the Scots College Old Boys Pipes and Drums Band. They had their first appearance as part of the 1993 centenary celebrations. The New South Wales Scottish Regiment Association, a proud regiment which can trace its history back to 1885 when the Scottish Rifles were formed. It became linked to the 30th Battalion during the 1920s and saw action in the later part of the New Guinea campaign during World War II. In 2020, soldiers from A Company, Scottish, were called out and deployed on Op Bushfire Assist, and many members have also deployed on Op COVID-19 Assist and Flood Assists across Australia. Many members have also served on overseas operations. And uh, we are enjoying seeing such an impressive turnout here. We are continuing our coverage across uh, the ABC today with a number of other broadcasts at 12.30. We'll be crossing live to Anzac Co for the Gallipoli Dawn service. This year marking the 108th anniversary of the landing at the Gallipoli Peninsula, which was then part of the Ottoman Empire. Following this service will be the dawn service from Villers Bretonneux and then at 3pm we are showing the many days of Anzac documentary looking at how Anzac Day has evolved over the decades. And here we have marching the 344 Musicians Flight Australian Air Force Cadets, also known as the Three Wing Band, formed in 2016 to support the 75th anniversary celebrations of Australia's Air Force cadets. From a start of 20 cadets and two staff, the band has grown to over 60 cadets and eight staff who are regularly playing with the band. This is the third time that they have participated in the Sydney Anzac Parade. And behind the Air Force Cadet Band, we have the Air Force contingent in today's march. They're being led today by Acting Air Commander, Air Commodore Harvey Reynolds, accompanied by Warrant Officer Ray Lee Scott, who is the command, Air Command Warrant Officer, and Flight Lieutenant Jessica Brody. Behind them is the 22 City of Sydney Squadron from RAF Base Richmond, led by Wing Commander Todd Yukowski. 22 Squadron is located at RAF Base Richmond, providing air base operational support, including firefighting services, as well as security and other essential air base functions, including air movements. Their link to Sydney goes back to 1936, when they were established as a Citizens Air Force Squadron. They went on to serve in the Second World War in the New Guinea campaign, being awarded the, with one of their members being awarded the Victoria Cross, the only Victoria Cross awarded to a uh, RAF member in the Pacific. Military working dogs with the 22 Squadron contingent there. His role is to provide deterrence and detainment of uh, intruders at RAF bases. Many people would have been familiar with military working dogs being German Shepherds, but for the most part, they're now Bel Belgian Malinois. Earlier this year, security forces functions at our RAF bases were reformed under the base units, moving across from one security forces squadron at RAF base Richmond to 22 squadron.
Now we can see the banner for the Australian Flying Corps, formed in 1912. Uh, this year actually marks the 110th anniversary of the formation of the Central Flying School at uh, Point Cook unit, which continues to exist today at RAF Base East Sail in Gippsland, Victoria. They're followed by the Air Force Australian Flying Corps and RAF Association New South Wales Division, being led by Ron Glue there, who was a assistant loadmaster or assistant, yeah, assistant loadmaster during the Vietnam War. During the First World War, more than 3,000 Australians served overseas in four flying squadrons of the Australian Flying Corps, deploying to what is now modern-day Iraq, as well as the Western Front of Europe. This includes Lieutenant Frank McNamara, whose rescue of a fellow downed pilot in the Middle East earned him the Victoria Cross. Air League carrying the banner for the Women's Auxiliary Australian Air Force, who I believe in the wheelchair behind them is Barbara Coward, who turns 101 in July. It's fantastic to see her uh, out on the march there today. The Women's Auxiliary Australian Air Force was the first and the largest of the three women's services during the war, with over 27,000 passing through its ranks. They made up 30% of the ground staff in the Air Force, becoming electricians, mechanics, radar and telegraph operators, and truck drivers. They were followed in 1950 by the Women's Royal Australian Air Force, which continued until 1977 when its members were transferred across to the RAF. And on the left there in the sky blue jacket is Del Gaudry, who retired earlier this month after 47 years of service. In 1977, members of the Women's Royal Australian Air Force were transferred across to the Royal Australian Air Force, who we can see uh, marching behind uh, the banner there. Today, women make up 25%, approximately 25% of the Air Force's uh, total workforce. Behind them is Headquarters Air Command from RAF Base Glenbrook on the foothill of the Blue Mountains, being led there by Wing Commander Ivan Benitez Aguirre. Headquarters Air Command or, uh, moved to RAF Base Glenbrook in 1950 into the site of the old Lapstone Hotel, which you can see from the Great Western Highway as you head west. Behind them is the RAF Vietnam contingent, which, as we mentioned earlier today during the broadcast, is marking the 50th anniversary since the return of the last Australians in Viet deployed to Vietnam. There's Bob Trelaw in, the, uh, in, his, in his hat. Um, the mentioned in dispatches uh, with 9 Squadron for rescuing troops from 9 RAR during a heavy contact. Uh, took 17 bullets through the plexiglass of his Iroquois and uh, there, there we are. You can see the mention of dispatches, Oakleaf on his uh, Vietnam service medal. He, uh, he, was, he flew the first gunship into the Battle of Bin Bar in June of 1969 and uh, retired as an Air Vice Marshal. The RAF deployed a number of squadrons to Vietnam throughout the war, including the 9 Squadron Iroquois, as we saw, as mentioned there, uh, as well as two Squadron Canberra bombers and the RAF transport flight Vietnam which later became 35 Squadron with the Caribou. Parramatta RSL Caledonian Pike Band on our screen there now. Another squadron with a connection to Vietnam is 37 Squadron, which is behind the Pipe Band, which this year marks the 80th anniversary of its establishment. Formed in Melbourne in 1943, they initially flew Lodestar transports across Australia and into New Guinea, before being re-equipped in 1944 with the Douglas Dakota. Following the Japanese surrender, 37 Squadron was one of many RAF units which brought home Australian POWs and transported the British Commonwealth Occupation Force to Japan. They were re-established in 1966 with the C-130 Hercules, which they continue to operate at RAF Base Richmond today. They're being led there today by Mr. Cole Coyne, a former Lowmaster leader with 37 Squadron.
arguably one of the busiest squadrons in the Air Force today. The uh, recent uh, operational deployments, including support to Operation Vanuatu Assist and New Zealand Assist following storm damage over there. We can now see the current serving uh, 37 Squadron contingent marching, which include which is being led by Wing Commander Charlie Freeburn. The squadron's based out at RAF Base Richmond. It's the only operational flying squadron to be based in the Sydney Basin for the Air Force. Flying 12 C-130J Hercules, which it received in 1999. Other recent deployments the squadron has conducted include to the Middle East area of operations, as well as support to uh, west floods in Western Australia and across uh, New South Wales. And here we have the Homebush Boys drum band. And it's a percussion ensemble with a membership representing their diverse community. For more than 15 years, the Drum Corps has commemorated significant community events, including regular Anzac Day events in the city centre. The Spitfire Association. In mid-1942, the first Spitfires were delivered to Australia and were originally based at RAF Base Richmond before deploying north to Darwin to defend against Japanese bombers. Part of the contingent today is uh, Ron Horton, who's part of Bomber Command, but he did fly Spitfires briefly during, there it is, flew Spitfires briefly at the end of the war. Uh, Spitfire Association also has uh, Jock Castles, who flew, learned to fly Spitfires from test pilot Neville Duke in Egypt before uh, flying in the Mediterranean theatre and unfortunately being shot down uh, over Italy and spending his 21st birthday as a prisoner of war fortunately surviving through the war and joining us here today. We can see here some of the 450 series of squadrons that were established during the Second World War. Uh, many of which uh, fought during the Mediterranean campaign of the Second World War. Uh, this year marks the 80th anniversary of the Allied victory uh, in the North Africa campaign. Many of these units then went on to fight in the Allied landings in Sicily and then the campaign in uh, Italy. Yeah, Doug, Wood, uh, Doug Miller's widow recently donated his the Distinguished Flying Cross that he earned uh, flying uh, P-40s in northern Italy in 1945. And uh, we'll have to put it on the display very shortly. Coming up soon is the number 30 Squadron Association banner, and I believe they're being led today by Bruce Robertson, who's 103 and served with the squadron during the Second World War. This year marks the 80th anniversary of the Battle of the Bismarck Sea, an engagement which settled the New Guinea campaign in the Allies' favour. And many RAF squadrons that took part are represented here today, including 30 Squadron and 22 Squadron. And I can see Bruce uh, waving to the crowd there. In early 1943, the Japanese Navy attempted to land 7,000 soldiers as reinforcements in the New Guinea North Coast. The RAF performed a coordinated attack on these ships with the US Army Air Force counterparts. A coordinated effort that was largely unprecedented for the RAF at, at the time. The battle was documented by Academy Award winning journalist Damien Parra who rode inside one of the RAF bow fighters, resting his camera on the shoulder of the pilot. Their aircraft flew at wave top height to strafe the bridges and anti-aircraft guns of the Japanese ships while American bombers attacked from above. Bruce Robertson, who we saw in the wheelchair there, replayed the audio from the battle on PA speakers at the aerodrome in Port Moresby so that the battle could be heard in real time. It was quite a brutal engagement, but the Allied success ensured the land war in New Guinea would reach a quicker end. We have here the Air League and city of Blacktown. They're making their second time through the march here today. 
and it's one of the oldest continually operating band within the Air League. A fully funded, self-funded youth band with more than 60 years service to Western Sydney and Blacktown members. They age from 8 to 50. Next we have the Sunderland Associations, 10 Squadron and 461 Squadron, which serve in the European Theatre of the War. 10 Squadron had actually deployed across to England in 1939, mid-1939, before the war broke out, to uh, pick up its squadron of Sunderland flying boats to return to Australia. When the war did break out, the squadron served in the Atlantic campaign through until the surrender the only RAF flying squadron to serve on continuous operations throughout the war. Behind them that we can see there is number three squadron, today being led by Wing Commander Adrian Keeley, who's uh, seen someone he obviously recognises there. They're based out at RAF Base Williamtown with the F-35, but have a strong link to Sydney through being based at RAF Base Richmond from 1925 through to 1940. In mid-1940, Three squadron deployed across to the Middle East and North Africa as a Army Cooperation Squadron, but later became a fighter bomber squadron with the Kitty Hawk and Mustang fighter bomber. By the war's end, they were the highest scoring RAF fighter squadron of the conflict. Returning to Australia and later becoming a fighter squadron at RAF base. Town. Number 75 Squadron marching with us today from RAF Base Tyndall in the Northern Territory. 75 Squadron's uh, had an auspicious start in 1942 with its uh, Kitty Hawks being deployed to Port Moresby to provide a defence of the city. They're being led today by Wing Commander Martin Parker, who is the current commanding officer. Throughout 75 Squadron's history, it's conducted a number of deployments, including to Malta following the Second World War, as well as several campaigns in the Middle East, including the 2003 invasion of Iraq. In fact, I believe we have uh, several members marching there today with the 75 Squadron who were involved with that uh, campaign 20 years ago. Seventy five Squadron today is equipped with the F-35 Lightning like the other RAF uh, fighter squadrons at uh, RAF Base Tyndall in the Northern Territory. Clan McLeod Pipe Band is joining us again in today's march. They have been piping in Sydney for 75 years. Performing initially in 1948 is the City of Mosman Pipe Band. 77 squadrons behind them. This year marks the 80th anniversary of the end of the Korean War, a conflict which involved 77 squadron with its Mustangs and Meteor fighters. The squadron was formed during the Second World War and originally deployed in the Northern Territory before moving across to New Guinea. I'm sure Ray Seaver would be watching Ray flew meteors in Korea in 53 and uh, almost 100 combat sorties over, over North Korea. And uh, so... I... Yeah, the, the, it was a squadron at the right place at the right time because uh, I believe they were in Japan as part of the British Commonwealth Occupation Force mm -hmm. following the Second World War before the uh, Korean War broke out. Uh, take, so they took their Mustangs across uh, into Korea and later re-equipped um, with the Meteor fighter. Actually, Bomber Command went past earlier, and I should uh, say good day to Tony Adams. I'm sure he's watching. Um, flew as a bomb aimer in Lancaster during the war. There we can see RAF Ubon, Thailand, 1962 to 1968. The RAF operated a squadron of Sabre fighters in uh, Thailand, up near the Vietnam border. Although they didn't conduct operations into Vietnam, they were deployed to provide air defence of Thailand. They also conducted a number of uh, training exercises and uh, engagements with uh, US Air Force uh, fighter bomber squadrons that were based at Ubon, providing them with essential training for, uh, for their readiness. Nice. 
79 Squadron continues to serve today, flying the Hawk lead-in fighter at Rathbase Pierce in Western Australia. Number three, Aeromedical Evacuation Squadron, today based at Rathbase Richmond, provides care where needed, as their motto describes. Being led today by Wing Commander Paul McGinty. The RAF has a long service of aeromedical evacuation going back to the Second World War with the introduction of new transport aircraft over the last 20 years, providing a significant expansion to how 3AMES can conduct its role. It was an RAAF National Service contingent. The threat of the Cold War turning hot in the 1950s led to the Australian Government raising a National Service scheme in, in uh, 1951. And uh... The Royal Air Force banner. The Royal Air Force is the oldest existing, uh, continuously existing independent Air Force established during the First World War. Many of its members uh, either deployed to Australia during conflict, as well as uh, coming across to our Air Force as lateral transfers. There we see the red banner of the civilian air crew, the Skippy Association. In times of conflict, civilian air crew have been part of the official military transport. They played an important role during the Second World War with civil aviation staff conducting transport missions throughout the conflict. During the Vietnam War, air crew and ground staff operated more than 300 flights to and from Saigon Airport, ferrying more than half of the Australian troops. Holroyd Boys Drum Corps is uh, joining us now and is the only A-grade brass band based in Western Sydney. They celebrated their 50th anniversary in 2022 and last year launched back into a busy schedule of concerts. It's been an exceptionally busy uh, 12 months for the Royal Australian Air Force and indeed the wider Australian Defence Force uh, supporting communities across the globe, but many of those we've helped have been much closer to home. In January, extreme flooding of the Fitzroy River near Derby in the far north of Western Australia turned remote towns into cattles and, and cattle properties into islands. Many of the squadrons marching here today were involved in relief operations that were conducted to support these communities. De Defence deployed with Air Force Hercules and Spartan transport aircraft and Army with Chinook and Taipan helicopters, working with state-based agencies to transport emergency services, deliver supplies to cut off communities and evacuate others. They were even called in to bring teachers for the new school year. Eddie Cudd is leading the Parachute Regiment Association of New South Wales. He is the president. The para's motto is, ready for anything. To earn the red beret, each member has to pass a gruelling selection course called P Company Pegasus. Brigade of Gurkhas, led by Major Bahala Bahadur Rai, 
Gurkhas has come from a small Himalayan country of Nepal and have served with the British Army for over 200 years. They're noted for their bravery and strength. Four Gurkha battalions served at Gallipoli. Ten Gurkha regiments were operated during World War II, serving in Syria, North Africa, Italy, Burma, India and Singapore. In May 2009, the British government announced that all Gurkha veterans who had retired before 1997 with at least four years' service would be allowed to settle in the UK. The traditional weapon, the Kukri sword, is the symbol on their banner, the, uh, that, that extraordinary curved knife that, uh, that every Gurkha soldier carries as part of his uniform. Cyprus Regiment, the Cypriots for uh, Anzacs. For the first time, the Cyprus Regiment is marching, led by Michael Phillips. The Cyprus Regiment, a volunteer unit of the British Army, saw action side by side with Australian and Greek forces during World War II. More than 30,000 Cypriots volunteered and served on the front line with distinction in the Battle of France, Battle of Crete, in Greece, North Africa, Egypt, Italy, and in the Middle East. Again, we have the Epping RSL Golden Kangaroos Marching Band. And they're based in the Hornsby Shire and have been performing in the community for over 50 years. And they consist of three concert bands, a stage band, and our marching band, the Golden Kangaroos. And they welcome members of all ages and abilities. They're directed by Stephen O'Doherty, who began with the band as a young player back in the 1970s and 80s, returning 12 years ago to take up that position as music director. G Ex-Servicemen and Women's Association Sydney is led by Lieutenant Colonel Mr Tate, uh, Tail, sorry. Uh, Fijian soldiers served with Australian troops in the Solomon Islands uh, during the Second World War and the jungles of Malaya during the emergency and recently in East Timor, Bougainville and Afghanistan. Elite Fiji First Commandos were attached to the US forces during the Second World War and worked closely with them. 78 Fijian soldiers lost their lives in this campaign. Royal Hong Kong Regiment. Led by Patrick Chung, Warrant Officer Class 1. The volunteers were formed in 1854 due to the defenceless state of the colony at the time. The forces saw active service during the defence of Hong Kong in World War II and was awarded the Battle Honour Hong Kong in 1957. Yeah, tragically, so many of them became prisoners of the Japanese and suffered dreadfully during the, the war. The volunteers were renamed after the war and later were honoured by the royal title by Her Majesty the Queen Elizabeth II. The regiment was disbanded in 1995 after 141 years of service. The Fiji Ex-Servicemen and Women's Association of Sydney. See the Tonga Ex Servicemen Association of Sydney. Just like the band. This association came into being at the start of 2019, and the units consists of men who served in the Solomon Islands during the Ramsey deployment and ex servicemen from His Majesty's Armed Forces Tonga representing members who served in Iraq and Afghanistan. Behind them are the Indian Defence Force veterans New South Wales, led today by squadron leader Sane Garawal, 
Around 15,000 Indian troops and non-combatants served at Gallipoli fighting alongside the Anzacs. Two mountain artillery batteries landed at Anzac Cove on the 25th of April and stayed until the final evacuation. In fact, the 60th uh, Indian Field Ambulance deployed to Korea and, uh, so, and uh, provide medical support as part of the Commonwealth Brigade and later the Commonwealth Division supporting three RAR and eventually the 1st and 2nd Battalions of the Royal Australian Regiment. Clint Marlborough is leading the Maltese ex servicemen's Association RSL sub-branch of New South Wales. The Maltese RSL sub-branch has been marching on Anzac Day for 50 years. Malta played an important role during the Second World War owing to its closeness to shipping lanes. In fact, two Maltese men served on HMAS Sydney, which sunk uh, with all lives lost off the coast of Western Australia. The bravery of the Maltese people during the Siege of Malta moved King George VI to award the George Cross to Malta on a collective basis to bear witness to their heroism and devotion. One of those supply officers that died on Sydney, his son served on Sydney III in the Korean War and designed sweetheart badges for the crew. The RAAF based a fighter wing in Malta, didn't they, after the Second World War? That's correct. Uh, 75 and 76 Squadron Vampires went across there in the early 1950s as part of a uh, Cold War uh, contingent there for several years. crowd has certainly built this morning during the course of the march. It's wonderful to see so many people out there supporting our veterans and our current serving members of the Australian Defence Force. wonderful and uh, a sense of connectedness to see so many of our members marching today carrying pictures of their loved ones from the many many decades of service throughout the last century and a half. We saw there as well the Maltese Concert Band formerly Our Lady Queen of Peace Maltese Band which was established in 1976. Rhodesian Ex Services Association is making its way behind the band and is led by Rick Dabrowski. The Rhodesian Regiment was formed in 1898 and served alongside Australian troops in the Boer War. They took part in the relief of Mafiking and the epic siege of Eflin's River Post. During the Second World War, the Rhodesian Armed Forces served in many British units and supplied three squadrons to the RAF. In 1951, they saw service with the Commonwealth troops in Malaya, and in 1952, they supplied troops for service in the Suez Canal Zone.
Australia also deployed a peacekeeping contingent to Rhodesia during the transition to Zimbabwe. We have the Australian Army Cadet Band uh, making their way down Elizabeth Street here. Behind our Rhodesian contingent, the National Sikh Council of Australia, marching for the Sikh regiments of World War I and World War II. And they're led by Colonel Sharandraj Singh Chima. During the First World War, Sikh regiments served at the Western Front, Gallipoli, the Middle East and Mesopotamia. During the Third Battle of Corinthia at Gallipoli, this 14th Sikh battalion lost more than half its numbers, killed or wounded in a matter of hours. During World War II, Sikhs fought in the North African campaign and Italy, as well as in many areas across the Asian continent. Just like the Aussies, they fought selflessly and far from home. Sikhs sacrificed their lives for the defence of freedom in Europe for, for an ally that was ruling their own homeland, and they did this out of honour and loyalty. South African Military Veterans Organisation of Australia being led today by Angus Pollitt. South Africans have fought alongside Australians in four major conflicts in the 20th century, including both world wars and the Korean War. Veterans marching today represent all four arms of their Defence Force, Army, Air Force, Navy and the medical services of the current South African Defence Force. As they march past the church at St James, one of the, uh, uh, an Australian, Mc uh, Kenneth Kennard McKellar, who is, is buried, was buried in South Africa, and uh, his family had him transferred to Waverley Cemetery, but uh, one of the 16,000 Australians who served in South Africa during the Second Anglo-Boer War, 1899 to 1902. So we, uh, our earliest military traditions, I, I suppose, uh, uh, connect to South Africa or Australia Federated during the uh, during the Boer War and many Australians served in units uh, of uh, that were raised in South Africa indeed thousands of Australians paid their own way to South Africa to serve in the in the Boer War and therefore served in Imperial units raised in what is now the uh, uh, the current public of South Africa. Entertainers and war correspondents. Leading this group is Lieutenant Colonel Ian Robertson, Robinson, AM CSC. The Forces Entertainment Association was started by a small group of Vietnam entertainers. They now invite other entertainers who have been to other theatres of war entertaining our troops to join them. They represent all those who have entertained Australian troops in the post-war period, from the Vietnam War through to Iraq, Afghanistan, East Timor and the Solomon Islands. They are very proud of their contribution to the morale of their troops, and so they should be. Australia also contributed entertainers to the US forces in, uh, in Vietnam. And uh, so if Mary Peck is watching, I'd like to say g'day to, uh, to her and the band that, that uh, she and her husband took to Vietnam and did four consecutive eight-month tours in Vietnam from 68 to 72 with the United Services Organisation. Uh, extraordinary contribution to the morale of troops in the, uh, in the Vietnam War. Castle Hill 
RSL Youth Band. This is the second circuit of the march today. They were formerly the City of Sydney Youth Band uh, and are one regarded as one of Australia's finest symphonic and wind orchestras and uh, regularly participate in state, national and championships. WR has an extensive annual performance calendar of 20 to 30 engagements each year and the members range in age from as young as 11 through to 19. One hundred years of legacy. Sydney Legacy and our War Widows Guild is led by Gwyn Boyd. As we know, legacy is a unique Australian tradition born out of the trenches of World War I, where a promise was made to a dying mate to look after the missus and the kids. Today, Legacy serves around 43,000 partners and 1,800 children and dependents with disabilities. They're extending support to many emergency services workers as well, or the, the children of emergency service workers who have been disabled. We're seeing uh, a tremendous community come together in support of all of our first responders from the military right through to our paid first responders and also their volunteers. Recognise David Deasy there and uh, those um, descendants of Boer War veterans. Our Ladies of the War Widows Guild and their supporting family members. The origin of the War Widows Guild uh, of Australia and New South Wales dates back to the 1945 during World War II and its values were underpinned by the mantra, War Widows Helping War Widows. They're followed by Toc H, Talbot House, uh, a, a, a religious organisation uh, that was set up by chaplains during the Great War at Popperingi in Belgium to uh, provide rest and recreation and, uh, and emotional as well as physical support for Australian and other British troops uh, in the, the, who were uh, coming out of the line during, in the uh, Ypres salient during the Second World War, uh, during the Great War, 1917. And Toc H still exists, it's a fantastic museum if you get a, a chance to, uh, to visit. Um, Toc H in uh, Ed Popperingi in Belgium. They uh, have created a, um, a museum and a memorial to uh, that, that vital role that they played in supporting the troops who suffered one of the most appalling battlefields of the Great War. The LLC Southern Cross Pipes and Drums. They were initially formed as the city of Bankstown. R and SL Community Club Limited Pipes and Drums back in 1992. They regularly compete in New South Wales interstate and overseas competitions in places like New Zealand and Scotland. Achieve many championship titles. And they're followed by the Australian World War One descendants, led by the President Greg Cowell. 
This group are a direct descendant of those who served in the Australian forces from 1914 to 1918. The centenary years of Anzac are very significant to these people. First formed in 2000 with only 10 dependents, the association has now grown its membership with over 100 marches from sons and daughters, nieces and nephews, right through to great, great grandchildren. They, they are marching to honour relatives long past. Now the aim of this association is to preserve and continue the memory of the Anzacs and encourage descendants to participate on Anzac Day. They also assist people to access information and records of their relatives. Australia's unique in that now, just how, how accessible our first AAF records are. Really, uh, we can do better research here than any other country that participated in the Great War. We have here the Shaw Winona Cadet Band. Established in 1908, the Shaw Cadet Unit, SCU, honours rich Anzac tradition, spanning multiple generations of cadets, great many of whom have served in theatres of war and also peacekeeping missions in pursuit of Australia's national interests. Indeed, Shaw Old Boys have served this great nation in all theatres of war from the Boer War through to Afghanistan. Descendants of World War II and post-World War II veterans, led by their president, Jeff Richards, and treasurer, Brian Freeman. Contingents such as this are really an indication of the way Anzac Day marches are changing. This Veterans Association has grown from seven members when it was started in 2007 to more than 400 members, and we can see many of them today marching. These descendants are marching in memory of their relatives who served in World War II and other post-war conflicts such as Korea and Vietnam. What a wonderful banner. Uh, dispatch riders, 18 dispatch rider section, providing uh, vital communications uh, and uh, uh, when radios weren't that uh, common, the dispatch riders were a, an essential link between uh, uh, combat units and headquarters. And, uh, in this case, they, uh, they're, they're remembering their service in, in Darwin. and New Guinea. We will also be continuing our coverage throughout the day at 12.30, crossing live to Anzac Co for the Gallipoli Dawn service. We'll follow that up with uh, the service from Villeur Brachadonneur. And then from 3 p.m. we have our very special documentary, The Many Days of Anzac. The 19th and the 35th were both militia battalions uh, that uh, volunteered for AIF service and so were able to deploy beyond Papua and fight in New Guinea and the final campaigns of 1945 in the Solomon Islands.
9 Div 6, every division had uh, an essential signals unit to connect headquarters with the brigades and uh, for communications to be passed down from, from uh, divisional headquarters through to the fighting units. And uh, so 6th, 7th, 8th and 9th divisions each had signals, contingent, uh, signals elements that uh, provided the vital communications at the, uh, at the highest levels of an infantry division. Burwood RSL Subbranch Pipes and Drums Band here. They were founded in 2005. Many of the pipers and drummers in the band are ex Australian Army Reserve. Most had served for at least 15 years, a number of them for more than 30 years. Some interesting AIF and AMF units marching past. I noticed uh, Second Fifth Australian General Hospital, uh, extraordinary service in North Africa and uh, Greece, Crete. Uh, indeed, they lost their CO in a German bombing raid during the evacuations from uh, from Greece, and uh, they were followed by uh, some of the composite light anti-aircraft units that uh, provided light and heavy anti-aircraft uh, defences in northern New Guinea. So, uh, as you can see, uh, Bougainville, New Britain, the, those final campaigns of 1945, the last of the Japanese holdout units and uh, uh, light anti-aircraft batteries deploying to, to those areas to uh, make sure that the infantry operating in the dense jungle were protected from the air. Yes, the Second Fifth Australian General Hospital Association has three generations of descendants marching under their own banner today, behind World War II descendants, and Australian General Hospital was formed in May 1940, comprising of surgeons, doctors, dentists and nurses. The Second Fifth Australian General Hospital also served in Eritrea, Ethiopia and PNG before ceasing to function in 1945. And the American Legion and US Marines, Yanks Down Under, led by Ken Sturdius, who is a, the post commander. They are members of a Legion post um, in Australia, uh, which was established in 1945. The American Legion is similar to the RSL and a post is the same as a sub-branch. There are over 17,000 posts worldwide with two here in Australia. Almost one million American service personnel have passed through this country and um, they were much better paid during that time than the Australians were. So uh, certainly during World War II, they earned a reputation as big spenders. Since then, Americans and Australians have served alongside each other in Korea, Vietnam, the Gulf War, Iraq and Afghanistan. Indeed, when General Monash fought the, launched his attack on Hamel in, uh, uh, on the 4th of July 1918, he, uh, there were Americans training alongside the Australians of the... Uh, of the, the 4th Division and um, uh, they elected to go into action alongside the Australians. So uh, uh, quite extraordinary that how the length of our alliances. Descendants of Chinese veterans from World War II. The association is being led today by Jin Cheng Meng was formed in 2014 and participated in the Anzac Day March ever since. The Chinese Defence Force fought the Japanese for nine years from 1937 to 1945 and effectively held over a million Japanese troops in China that otherwise would have been used in the war in the Pacific. Some Australians did fight alongside the Chinese on the island of Hainan after they'd escaped from a POW camp during the war. 
We also had a special forces unit mission in, in uh, Mission 204 in China uh, during the Second World War, having a look at how the Japanese uh, operated before they'd entered the Pacific. So uh, the, the connections with China are, are interesting. And, uh and the King's School Cadet Corps Band making their second circuit here of the march. It's one of the oldest and largest in Australia. The French War Veterans Association of New South Wales and is led by Philippe Melol today. Now this contingent is made up of veterans and descendants from the Free French Forces in the Second World War and many post-war conflicts. There are also veterans from peacekeeping missions throughout the world marching today. Quick shout out to current serving defence members that are working alongside the French today in New Caledonia. And our colleagues and partners from Greece, the Greek Return Servicemen's League of New South Wales, led by Peter Tisigus. Many Greek Australians have served in the Australian Defence Force, including nearly 90 who were at Gallipoli and the Western Front during the First World War. The battles of Greece and Crete in 1941 saw Australian soldiers fight alongside the local population against the invading German army. Many Greeks and Cretan families often took fatal risks to shelter soldiers from the Germans. Yeah, indeed, the 4th and 5th um, regiments uh, fought alongside the 2nd 1st Battalion from New South Wales in the defence of the airfield at Rethymnon and uh, the Greeks had a fighter squadron in Korea. And the United Irish Ex-Services Association of Australia, led by Patrick Armstrong of the Royal Ulster Rifles. The Irish have a piper and a drum with them today. Founded by Patrick of the Royal Ulster Rifles in 2006, the association is open to any person who served in any allied military force and it currently has 30, 30 members. We can see the Korean flag making its way down. This unit consists of veterans from the Korean War Veterans Association. The Korean Veterans, the Korean Vietnam Veterans Association of Australia and Korean Marine Corps Association, who have all settled here in Australia. In fact, one of the, there was a big contingent of Koreans called CATCOMs, Korean Augmentation Troops Commonwealth Brigade, that served alongside three RAR during the Battle of Mariangsan and. Uh, uh, Colonel Frank Hassett claims that he really couldn't have won the battle without the support of the CATCOMs from uh, South Korea. And Stan Zak the, is the president of the Polish Ex Servicemen's Association today, and he leads that contingent. The Sydney sub branch of the Polish Ex Servicemen's Association was established in 1950 and they are marching today to honour and remember those who fought for an independent Poland during the Second World War. Polish fighter pilots contributed greatly to the Battle of Britain. There were 16 Polish squadrons in the Royal Air Force. Co Polish ground troops were also at the Siege of Tobruk, Monte Cassino, the D-Day landings and the Battle of Berlin. Yeah, Polish artillery supported the 9th Australian Division during the Siege of Tobruk and, uh, and uh, some very interesting associations formed between uh, Polish gunners and Australian infantry during the siege. Air League band Riverwood is joining us now on the screens. Uh, they're a band formed from the Riverwood Squadron and are known locally and internationally, representing Australia at the 2019 Pearl Harbour Memorial Parade in Hawaii. And 
a shout out today to Sophia Urukalo Chetnik, a nurse and a courier from Gra Shaka Chetnik Brigade. Serbian people were among the first to form resistance against the Nazis in occupied Europe during World War II. They often fought a guerrilla forces behind enemy lines and provided safe evacuation from many Allied airmen who had been shot down over Europe. 100-year-old Sofia is so proud to be leading the Serbian contingent today. Australia provided nurses to a Scottish hospital unit serving on the Serbian front during the Great War. It's uh, uh, an interesting connection between Sydney Hospital and the nurses that trained there that served alongside the Serbs in 1916 to 1918. In fact, I think Miles Franklin served in Serbia as part of the Australian contingent on the Serbian front during the Great War. New South Wales RSL Turkish sub-branch. Today is an important day for both Australians and Turkish people. In spite of the fierce fighting that occurred at Gallipoli, Australian and Turkish soldiers developed a mutual respect for each other. In the post-war period, many Turks settled in Australia. Turkish troops have fought alongside the Australians in the Korean War and the Gulf War. Turkish soldiers have also served with United Nations peacekeeping troops in Somalia, Bosnia and Kosovo. Australians and Turks used to have Anzac Day together in Korea. The Turkish Independent Infantry Brigade uh, for, uh, would commemorate Anzac Day alongside each of the battalions of the Royal Australian Regiment. You can see now the Army of the Republic of Vietnam Association, who have marched since uh, 1977, being led today by Bak Van. Men and women are marching, uh, veterans from the South Vietnamese Army who fought alongside Australian and American troops during the conflict. There are an estimated 15,000 Vietnamese veterans from this conflict who now call Australia home. And a big shout out to the State Emergency Service and the Return Service League Marshals. Our SES marching in their distinctive orange uniforms. Volunteers from the SES have been busy since early this morning supporting the march, assisting our elderly veterans and organising the participants. The SES is the most widely used rescue and public safety organisation in New South Wales. And the RSL marshals, now we can see them, who have been volunteering their time today to make sure this march was as organised as possible. They have done an absolutely wonderful job. What a magnificent day indeed to see so many marching. This is where we will leave you now. We will be crossing to the Dawn service, getting underway at Anzac Cove shortly. Uh, we'd like to thank also our co-commentators here joining us today, Bradley Manera. Georgina Whelan and Eamon Hamilton. We'll leave you now with some highlights.